Seriously.
What's going on, Fortnite fam? Welcome to the FNCS. This is NA. We just got done wrapping up EU. We got to see the first week of major number two over there, but now it's our time. Now we're here to see some action. Welcome to chapter five, season two, Myths and Mortals. Now I have a couple myths standing by with me. I'm Zeke, I'll be your host, but we also have Kelly, we also have Vivid. I feel like you've probably heard their names before. Uh, friends, welcome to major number two. Not only is this the start of a brand new major, but at the end of this, more spots available going to Global Championships. So how are you guys feeling coming into today? Oh, I love the format, right? Last year, we were greeted with such a gift throughout the year, the qualification spots going into Globals. Now this year, of course, repeating that kind of process, major two. I feel like there's so much pressure on the line for anybody looking to qualify for Globals, right? Because if you think about the layout, after this, there's only one more major, major number three. And at that point in time, that's pretty much the last chance any of our competitors will have to qualify. And Kelly, if I was competing, I would not want to go that far into the competition to kind of risk my qualification. No, not at all. And I am so excited to get into these games because if you guys haven't been keeping up with the drama with this most recent season, there's been a bit of a roster apocalypse going on in the North American players, literally global champions breaking up. But we're going to have to see how that affects everything once the games get started. Yeah, why don't we just start with that, right? Let's just start where we always start, and that's duels. We want to highlight for y'all. Of course, if this is the first time you ever watched Fortnite Competitive, welcome. We are happy you're here. Let's get you kind of caught up. So let's start with Acorn and Cold. These guys just won major number one. They already have themselves a spot secured going to the global championship. So I, it feels like for me, Vivid, they're just looking to play gatekeeper for everyone else. Yeah, I mean, Acorn and Cold, this is a duo we love to see kind of come back and continue to run through Major 2, Kelly. They are just so good. Yeah, and they're still landing over in fencing fields, which we saw them absolutely dominate in Major 1. They beat out second place by 170 points. I don't Ooh. think it was much of a surprise, though. Acorn and Cold have been one of the most consistent duos for a very long time now when it seems like all these other players are kind of breaking up and not having synergy that is not the case for acorn and cold so i'm excited to see what exactly is going to be happening here today in major one they didn't have a relative to them it didn't have the best performances in the open qualifiers and semifinals but clearly that didn't affect them too much because they ended up winning the whole thing yeah, and let's go ahead and jump into actually one of the newer duos that have formed coming into the season, right? Here we kind go. Of mentioned the roster apocalypse. The next duo that we kind of want to highlight here is Kanada and uh, Cooper. Now, everybody <laughs> used to the <laughs> NA what? competition is used to hearing Kanada and Aegis. They've been together for so long, but this season the split has finally happened, and everybody's kind of like, wait. Cooper, global championship winner Cooper, no longer duo with Miro. I mean, they won an in-person event together and to kind of make a decision to split up from your duo when you guys were doing that well is kind of crazy. But for me personally, I'm kind of excited to see how this duo can actually manage because Kanata, we remember, he at one point in his career was like, you know what, all these IGLs on this region, they're trash. I'm gonna go ahead and show them how it's done. <laughs> and he's been in IGL for the longest time, but Cooper's kind of been in that role when it comes to them and Miro or him and Miro. So now kind of like two IGLs on the same duo. We'll have to see how that kind of pans out for this major. Also, we all love to say this stat, but Kanata, the only player to go to every single FNCS Grand Finals. Ooh. Is he going to do it again? Well, that was back when he was playing with Agers. And speaking of Agers, his new duo mate is going to be the world champion. We know him. We love him. It is Booga. And I swear, Booga has had to play with every single player now that is a top player in North America. But joining up with Agers, it looks like they're going to be landing over in Mount Olympus right there. So, of course, we can expect the aspect of speed on them as well as Zeus's Huntress DMR but as far as these two have been competing together over in the most recent cash cups they actually had a pretty good performance so far they've gotten a, a few seventh places but in the most recent one ending up in third which is actually what Booga placed in the last major so I'm a little surprised with him and Aviv doing so well in major one breaking up and now joining a new duo yeah, I mean, if anybody knows anything about NA, we're used to calling this the Booga effect. Gets to choose who he wants to do it with and causes all of those switch ups to happen. And a duo this season, Kelly, that is used to getting what they want as well. Oh gosh, like who is it? Gosh, their names, I just can't really, oh, 
Peter Ba and Poyo, the duo that everybody is willing to give the championship to early because that's how well they're playing. Everybody kind of thinks this FNCS is almost a waste of time because they're so confident that Peter Ba and Poyo are going to win it. And if my eyes do not deceive me, Kelly, I'm looking at the bottom right there. Does that say five cash cups won? It doesn't even do its service because it's five cash cups in a row. Ooh. And not only did they get first place in all of those, it is the amount that they have defeated second place by that is truly astounding for this duo. And you can see at the bottom, that's kind of where they started off. Just a 36 point lead against Dukes and Noxie. But everyone remembers the third cash cup from the season versus Clicks and Epic Whale, where they literally won five out of the six Jeez. games. It was mind-boggling. And then you can see in the most recent one, beating out Threats and Sphinx by just 67 points. Uh, however, that still is three out of the six games won. The fact that that is one of their more lackluster performances and they still get first place is, is a bit of a surprise. However, a lot of duos have been trying to contest them. Of course, they're going to be landing over in Grim Gates, which is a huge POI. It looks like Quanti and Chubbs might try to be contesting them today. All right, okay, we'll get to POIs in a second because first what I want to take a moment here is to introduce our casters. They'll be calling all of the actions. So we wanted to get their thoughts as well on duels they're excited to see. This is Monster D Face and the best taco. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Zeke. And I mean, Taco and I are for sure on the Peter Bot and Boyo train here because you, you kind of have to. Grimgate's such a powerful drop spot. And if Taco, if they get more or less uncontested leaning towards finals, it could just be a runaway train. It's not even about being contested at this point. I'm starting to believe contested, and especially in a lobby format like this MDF where you just don't really know which duos you're going to be up against. Sure, there's 250, but everybody being split up into five separate lobbies for a team like Peter Bot and Poyo, Peter Bot boasts a six 68% win rate when he's contested off spawn. So if anything, I would imagine that this would just be a huge benefit to this team that's already riding off a lot of momentum. Yeah, and they continue to show it. You see the clips popping and it's kind of surfacing online here all over socials where players are, you know, pretty proud if they're able to take down Peterbot essentially. It becomes an accolade at this point with how much of a great season he's been on a run on alongside Boyo. So, I mean, Zeke, for us, we're going to be keeping laser focus right now on Peterbot and Boyo and see how they perform throughout to, uh, today's competition. And I couldn't blame you, right? I don't think anyone could blame you. The community, like Vivid said, are pretty much looking at them saying, yeah, they've already won Mage 2. Just give them the axe, give them the spotted globals. Let's go, uh, let's go next. Now, Kelly mentioned the map. Let's take a moment here to focus in on that with a new season of Korm. Of course, comes changes to the map. Why not start things off with Mount Olympus? Now, Kelly is your queen of Greek mythology. She was recently on a drop spot and called out. This is what she's excited about. So talk to me a little bit about Mount Olympus. I mean, Mount Olympus is an absolutely incredible POI. Not only is Zeus going to be waiting there for you with his aspect of speed, but of course we do have that Zeus weapon as well. And there's just so many new POIs. There's new items. We have new chests that have been added to the game. And it just looks so glorious. And I know that's like, you know, not an issue for everyone else, but just the way that they add these new POIs to the map just gets me so excited, Vivid. Of course, we do love new PY Southeast looking pretty strong as well, but unfortunately being overshadowed by the potential that comes from the northwestern side of the map. Two other POIs that have been added, the Underworld and Grim Gate. These POIs are, of course, going to feature their own little boss battles up here where you can gather a couple of things that will give you an advantage. But honestly, my favorite part about this part of the map it's going to be that river, the underworld dash that you can kind of get from just dipping your toes in the river. It's going to give you three of those dashes so that way you can kind of use them throughout the match. And honestly, it's kind of been the name of the game this season, making sure that you have those dashes for as long as you possibly can, right? If zones kind of end up here, Zeke, gosh, the chaos that will ensue. Bro, I love landing here, right? The first thing you do is you either pick up a gun or you open a chest and you immediately drop into the river sticks, yep. right? You've got three charges to work with and everyone's just zipping and zopping, trading shots. You're looking to hide. You're looking to keep one in case everything goes awful like me most of the time. And you just got to try and dash away. It's so much fun landing here. So let's talk about these medallions. Okay, Kelly highlighted one for us. Now with four medallions in the game, there's going to be one that kind of stands up, but can we just kind of talk about these really quickly? 
Yeah, I mean, awesome medallions kind of added this season. The aspect of speed, of course, pretty straightforward. Gonna allow you to move just a little bit faster. And the next one we have to talk about, Kelly, the aspect of agility, those underworld dashes. It actually regens them for you throughout the match. You don't even need to dip into the, the green river up there to actually gain those charges. And of course, everyone is excited for the aspect of Siphon going to be over in the underworld. And then finally, Ares is going to have the aspect of combat, giving you just a little bit of damage. Yeah, so, so good. Again, we want to reiterate that aspect of agility. It's going to give people that Sticks River dashes outside of that locale. So many people are look, going, going to look to prioritize this, right? Especially as they're looking to contest high ground, things like that. It's gonna be crazy. We also have some new weapons. I mean, the gatekeeper shotgun. Uh, what do you guys think? With three round shots, of course, there's ways to kind of change up how how many shots you have. But what do you guys think? Yeah, definitely. I think this is kind of the strongest shotgun this season, but we are kind of like in a preference a little bit of a season. Some some people are still opting to actually take the, the hammer pump shotgun, but the gatekeeper shotgun being new kind of introduced this season. It is a little risky though, Kelly, right? Because if you jump into a box and miss some of those shots, may not bode so well for you. And then, of course, we do have some new DMRs that have been added, which obviously the sniper meta kind of falling out of grace here with the DMRs being added to it. Definitely going to shake things up a little bit, but I, that gatekeeper, man, everyone's going for it. <laughs> and it just also makes Grim Gates that much stronger because you do get the mythic gatekeeper there. So I think a lot of people are going to be gunning for Peter and Poyo or running the opposite direction of them, either or. Now, let's talk about bunkers. All right, these are kind of these new little mid-game objective things happening. They don't always spawn right away. They kind of spawn around the map. Can you kind of break these down? Yeah, so they're actually gonna spawn just after third zone closes on the maps, right? So kind of in the early game, but like I said, just after third zone closes. So Kelly, sometimes they'll actually be in the storm and we'll see some teams yeah. probably throughout the competition today actually go ahead and tank damage to make sure that they get some of this loot because there is so much loot within these bunkers. Yeah, you're gonna have, that is the only location for the mod benches now. So if you need to grab some gold, like we see here on the screen, mod up your weapons to exactly how you like, well, then this is the way to go. The only concern though is, although there are nine locations for these bunkers to spawn, only five of them are going to spawn in a game. So kind of similar to what we saw with the forecast towers, there is still a level of RNG with it. That's right. So now we've kind of put all the cards on the table, right? We've given you guys a, a lay of the land. Let's talk about expectations. Now, again, we're going to be jumping into lobbies. There's going to be so much action. And for these duos, they're going to hop in. And in one lobby, they might have, you know, so many duos are used to seeing. They might play their next game and it'd be a completely different list of players. How do you guys feel we're going to fare in this first week of competition? But it's going to be tough, right? Remember, we're kind of be, going to be jumping into a lot of lobbies that are kind of going on simultaneously. You're not going to know who's going to be landing at your POI, right? And with the potential of such a strong POI like Grimgate, I'm assuming kind of that we're going to see a bunch of teams kind of get out of there with that aspect of agility. And we, we're going to see so many pop off games throughout the competition today. Yeah, and there's also a level of mysteriousness going on with this most recent qualifier because we had an EU duo slip oh. through the cracks and make their way to round four. Of course, I'm talking about Paco and Mixon. So, you know, with that, I love it. You can never really predict in Fortnite what's going to happen because there's just so many variables when it goes into the FNCS. So will an EU team break top 10? Oh, eh, maybe, maybe not. Please not. No, <laughs> we'll find out. Kelly already looking to curse <laughs> the whole lobbies. All right. Well, with that being said, it is that time the competition is upon us so let's kick off kick it all off let's kick it on over to our casters to begin the competition that's right and i mean kelly's definitely onto something there is going to be a lot different things happening today including the way we're going to cover these games right taco because we are going to be having tons of rolling lobbies of course happening at once of course, but again, for a lot of these teams that managed to be one of the 250 teams that qual the MDF, it, it's mostly about trying to get those series points secured. You're already looking relatively good because if you get one week even, that's usually going to solidify you for at least that lower bracket in the semis. But again, they have to make it there first. And so with the rolling lobbies feature, at least there's one positive mentality where if you get elimed early, you can still just jump right back in and be ready to queue up for the next lobby. 
yeah and that is going to be the name of the game of course right how well can you play and ultimately it doesn't really matter about like you mentioned coming out at the very very top you just have to perform pretty good earn as much as possible to uh, end up and land yourself the best odds as possible of course for getting to the finals in those upper bracket spots those seats are going to be of course prestigious as we start gearing our way through these weeks but here today um it is going to be a matter of you don't necessarily know who is going to end up in your game so you could end up in one of those lobbies where there are more people landing around your general area and a dynamic of fortnite plays out just a little bit different in these types of lobbies because these are not set lobbies but these are just the upper caliber if you will of the best the best in na but as far as Grimgate is concerned, MDF, I'm expecting it to be a bump in POI today. Yeah. Whether Peterbot and Poyo are there, whoever's looking to actually take control of that drop off rip is going to be the most interesting feature because, again, the, the analyst touched on it perfectly. That aspect of agility just has so much control, especially when it comes to height, and we'll get a chance to see how it pans out because at least our first lobby is ready for us to spectate. All right, well, the first match of the qualifier is here, and we get to see how this is all going to shake up. This is the North American region, like we mentioned before, where it's the upper portion of the best of the best here in NA in the rolling lobbies. A little bit of variety is gonna be happening here as we start to touch down. The first team to be highlighted is gonna be Booga and Agers, as you can already see the feed beginning to light up for the early teams dropping down but hey if you get eliminated early it's not gonna be the end of the world Booga is gonna have the best of the drop here as he touches down and gets the first two weapons is he gonna share with Adrius? Uh, I guess not green man oh, there it is <laughs> <laughs> well, at least split the barrels that's just to be expected yeah, yeah. Booga though that drop is the primary one to control just getting that god chest immediately and quanti and chubs quanti has been very vocal at least on socials in terms of wanting to contest this poi here at grim gate but booga does seem as though he's elected to drop that drum gun to help out agers meanwhile quanti and chubs going to take advantage of some of the fizzberry juice and get max shields they want to be sure that they are plenty healthy when they look to tackle this challenge up against Booga and Agers. And this is kind of interesting, even from Booga and Agers right now, right? Deciding to come to the Grim Gate, it's no secret, like we mentioned before, that this is gonna be the home of Peter Bot employer should they make it all the way through to the very end. So it's gonna be difficult to claim this drop and claim it with dominance because you can tell right now, the best duos out there are willing to fight for it or at the very least take their chances here in the qualifier to have the best odds at having successful games round after round. Jump over to the other side though, we got Man City's Threats and Sphinx here is coming right up from underneath the battleground. Sounds like there's a good, a good amount of teams actually just above <laughs> them here and they're trying to catch themselves a nice little third party. And that's the thing is that no one duo can truly claim a POI unless they just win it outright. You're going to have to battle for control in each of these lobbies that these teams find themselves colliding in. Sphinx, though, rather tactical on the approach, just trying to crouch around, but has been spotted out. Going to take some decent tags, going for the window peek, but it's just not good enough. Eats way too much damage to return, forced to close himself off inside this box, but still wants to keep some pressure going because he's got threats inside mixing things up, and he's already found one knock. Threats first on the board here for his duo, and that's going to buy ample time for Sphinx now to finally get some shield regen. And well played. Well played on Threats to capitalize on the opening window there. Now, Sphinx was the one tanking the damage, but Threats doesn't miss a beat. And that's really how you want your fights to go, especially when there's multiple duos nearby. So big respects to Threats, man. Wrapping up this battle super quickly, not exposing them to any extra you know, a uh, threat or potential duos to set up on them because little do they know there are several just nearby. And again, as we jump back to the Grim Gate, let's not forget, we there's a lot to highlight here at this draw spot outside of, of course, the mythical weapon upgrade, that the potential there, but this lake as well, right? Which gives you those dashes like we chatted about. You get all this extra mobility and essential um, advantage over the next team you get to fight. So if there are aggressive teams, this is going to be the place to be, this general area. It's also extremely problematic, though, in terms of just trying to chase down Elims, trying to prioritize immediate knocks and follow-ups. It's, it's really hard to key at Grimgate just because of how effective movement is there with the underworld dashes. But right now, Death Polarized 
definitely not the position they want to find themselves in here at Pleasant Piazza. They've already been involved with a handful of pressure. Polarized boasting one elimination, though. At least two points having been secured for this duo, but with no heals on either of them, no possibility for S.H.I.E.L.D. to get regen anytime soon. Polarized seems to have found some bandages for the time being, but it's still gonna make things rather difficult here because there are a couple of other teams hanging around the vicinity and panning right back over to Grim Gay. You can see no one has truly managed to take control of this POI just yet. No challenge out onto Cerberus. This team's just trying to make sure they have ample material for the box fights to come. Yeah, but Skittles and Trashy do have two eliminations, so things might have settled down here for the most part. I thought for a second it might have been out to Quanti and Chubbs, but no, Quanti is still inside the main facility here of the Grim Gate, so fight's breaking out. Skittles, no stranger to early game battles. This is almost his, his comfort zone. I feel like FNCS after FNCS, he finds himself very much contested. Um, and he performs relatively well for a player that's been contested for most of his career as a professional Fortnite player. On the other side, though, we have a little ambush being set up right now by Stiff and Cursed. That's only if Badger and Dash are going to take the bait, though. Doesn't appear as though they have any idea at what lies in wait here between Cursed and Stiff and and they're just going to continue to crouch off. They kind of recognize the fact they definitely want to utilize this stealth to try and get some early surge going, because again, that's why you'll see so many teams trying to set up in these uh, kind of ambush positions, like you pointed out, MDF. But with the way that Curse and Stefaruni are just continuing to approach here, uh, they are definitely expending a decent amount of time. So you'd imagine that this is kind of just an engagement that they're going to have to force at some point if they don't get the upper hand off the immediate surprise. That is right. The clock is ticking here. But Stiff and Curse likely recognizing that as well. Let's not forget this little offshore location does yield out some metal as well. So they are likely trying to take advantage here and see what type of big come up they can make at the moment. Absolutely ready for anything. Here it is. Distractions are made. Dashed to be one of the first to be spotted out. And he looks outwards and they're on high alert right now. See, half that metal cap is already in, so they've done what they needed to do here, but no, Badger gets split up, and Curse comes in, tanks a tag, and Stiff finishes. Seems like wow. everything here. Dash and company did all the hard work for them, and look at that, Taco. I mean, I guess you can say it was worth it. Playing nice and patient here. Yeah, especially if you're going to invest as much time as Stiffroni and Curse did, but danger on the horizon. Spotted out M Pen and Pump in the background there. They could be potentially looking to approach. And that's another thing that's a, a really big point of consideration because even when you're looking at a POI like Grim Gate, for example, you have to always keep in mind there's probably going to be teams that are looking to push from the underworld into Grim Gate. It's just been so common, especially for anybody that's had a chance to kind of preview what cash cups have looked like. Sure, we know that Peterbot and Poyo have been very commanding at that POI, but it's also just so much volume in terms of the amount of teams that just continue trying to pressure at that POI. And it, it's just so easy to make that rotation from Underworld straight to Grim Gate and vice versa. A lot of times you'll see teams, once they get that aspect of agility, they also want that aspect of Siphon to control as well. So just some... Uh, Food for thought, some things to keep in the back of mind that even if you clear out Grim Gate, you can't necessarily consider it safe. Yeah, definitely. Not Listen, when at the end of the day, when you, you're holding an aspect, you mean you have a huge target on your back. And those POIs are always going to have teams looking at possibly try something different, right? Try their luck if they catch you in the process. But Zervo on the move right now. Him and Nitrix successfully have a set of eliminations, but the tags. Pretty good from the surrounding opponents. This is gonna slow down their route for a second. They got the tower, they got the extra material. I mean, now it's a matter of farming tags here. Who's that down low? Is that Booga and Ager's already here? Approaching on the territory. Booga, possibly looking for a quick rotate with the wings of Icarus. But it's interesting to still see him opt for that uh, as an item slot. 
this early on. So it does appear as though rotates are the primary focus for Booga and Aegers. A lot of action happening though. Still at Grim Gate, trashy, Skittles, death and polarized. The immediate box fight action that you would anticipate. But it's gonna be death and polarized actually. Death trying to get a different line of sight now. Onto Trashy and Skittles box. Know that he got a couple of tags earlier on. So at least a little bit of surge damage. But he's got to be careful on his backside. Skittles. And the dashes. The underworld dashes is the primary problem they're encountering. But you got Mini Peterbot. And Sporks also looking to Tango here. And things are picking up in a way that Death and Polarize certainly did not anticipate. Death finding himself incredibly low now. Forced to full retreat here. But Sporks just one layer above continuing to try and get some decent damage, if not a knock or elimination outright. And so for now, quick pause here as Death Polarize, they're gonna be forced into expending some of the Fizz Berry, still have a full one in Polarize's loadout though. But they are running relatively low on builds and heals, and that's something to keep in mind for the mid game. Well, I'm more impressed how Polarize and Death actually managed to come back into this. Let's not forget, just moments ago, we tuned in with them and they didn't, they didn't have any shields, so they must have caught a bunker must have found something to put them back in the game. The Sporks and company do not care. They're pressuring right now. They already forced the other duo out. Skittles has backed off and Sporks and Mini here have a chance now. To take a clean two on two. The longer death and polarized weight though, the less likely they are to be successful here. As they of course had the aggression going and they've expended the material as well. Yup, look at that. Perfect time to just check in. 20 mats here on polarized. It's only a matter of time here, Taco. Got to be concise on this approach because like you just said, MDF, they don't have a whole lot of builds to work with for either of them. Polarized. Oh, here he goes. 19 remains. Tries to see if he can just Ooh. take the box. Jumps immediately in. Mini's going to be the first to fall here. Full elimination look at, count now. Look at those with mats. two. And that's exactly what Polarized needed to keep this engagement going because now they can look to possibly just full pressure onto Mini's teammate, but instead Sporks, he's gonna take that as the ultimate retreat call, and for good reason. You know, this is a big weekend for uh, my guy Death here, just signed to Team Outlaw, so he's gotta represent here. So we jump now back with Bryce and Bolts, land far Eastern, and you can see they're wearing the damage of the zone on their sleeves here. Bolts forced up to heal now and just kind of reset. But two eliminations. Every team we've jumped in with so far seems to be well situated. And this lobby is off to the races as we are already nearing half the player lobby sent back. Oh, up the top. At Dorito. Cold shot here from Bulls. Nothing connects, but time to move. Don't want to play with that zone for too much longer. Smart, too, just using some of the natural features. Try and preserve as much of their builds as possible. But Bryce and Bolts, they know that there's at least one team that's also following a, a similar rotate pattern to themselves. So they could be looking for an opportunity, especially since Bolts has that Reaper Sniper if he's able to connect with even a body shot or better still, a headshot. Some nice search that they could get going. But Pump and M-Pen. They're actually looking to take the water route, crossing the river here from Rebel's Roost. Now find themselves just outside of the underworld. Four Elims for this team right here. And they've definitely been moving. Off to a super hot start here. Quanti has probably picked up Chubbs like two or three times this game. I swear, I've seen him in the feed <laughs> fall into different players every time. One of those ones with Skittles. Yeah, again, I, I just think a, a lot of players definitely trying to get active early on, but for Pump and M-Pen, this is actually a really nice approach coming from the dead side of the zone, and when you already have four eliminations, you know that they've got ample surge already locked in, so they can just prioritize oh. positioning. And we were just speaking so highly of death, unfortunately finds himself knocked in this situation. Dash and Seek, not looking to let up anytime soon. Once the knock goes through, 
you can expect to just be fully keyed immediately after Polarize. Maybe trying to lurk here. Hope for an opportunity to see if you can get Death's reloot card and look to make some magic happen. Get his duo back into the lobby. Yeah, Dash and Seeker definitely feeling pretty good right now. Three eliminations now. He gets to watch that back one more time. Death obviously found himself out of position, likely in a spot that he couldn't throw a wall down. Let's see. Oh no, he just got pieced up, pushed out. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Dash quick and clean with it. Unfortunately, Death didn't stand a chance. And look, he, he had true control of his general area, but Dash and Seek laying on top of him, and this is what we talked about. You play around this Grim Gate area, you're going to have teams that have, obviously, the Underworld Dash effect. They can jump on top of you before you realize it. It's so hard to keep players out of your box as well. Yeah. Really easy to just be caught off guard. But Dash and Seek, well played to them. Also likely getting the audio cues from Polarize, who's still hanging around, but it's not because Polarize wants to still be there. It's he's pincered between two separate teams. Curious to see how he manages to fare later on. It's not a chance, right? <laughs> you, you wouldn't expect it, but you never really know. Polarize has pulled off some pretty insane clutches in the past from a solo perspective, and you just have to hope for the best sometimes for some of these teams involved, just like Quanti here at Rebels Roost. Going for the reboot Quanti, now onto Chuck. trying to set a record for, <laughs> for how reboot? many times can you bring back your duo in a <laughs> FNCS finals or FNCS qualifier? Quanti's definitely on pace for the record right now. At this point, sacrifice him again and make history. The problem, though, is when you're expending that much time just on reboots or revives. I mean, that's time that you're missing out on farming. That's time that you're missing out on trying to accrue damage for Surge later on. So don't think that they're out of the woods just yet, simply because Quanti's able to bring Chubbs back. It's still going to be very difficult for them to just continue to move through each of the next zones. And Sporks, he could use a bit of good luck here, but he's probably not going to be able to find it. Quite literally stuck between a rock and a hard place here as Veer and Freeze. They're not going to give him the time of day. An immediate elimination there. Sporks will have to queue up for the next one. Nice little elimination there. It's going to also refresh him up. Here at the south portion, and the zone pulls their way. Bit of a lucky draw for them. As there's a large body of water here separating the bulk of the land. And you can see other duels already making the move on in. Saw in the distance there. Uh, Cease, one of those teams, poised up at a box. We'll do some updates here shortly. Let's see. Freeze on the move here. Trying to edge their way down to the beach's edge. And there goes Cease and Jack right now, already on the move. Just behind Sphinx and company here. So they're right in between all these duos. And ooh, Jack gets punished there. Two eliminations for the veteran Cease and Jack here. Almost wondering if Cease might be in control of the shield potions or not, because Jack only having small shield potions to work with. This is not the kind of heal situation you would typically expect. It's going to make things relatively tough for Jack and Cease in future rotates, especially as the congestion continues to build on this east side of the zone. But they're doing what they can. Quick replay now, onto Freeze. And I know what's up next, Dang. Monster. You see the sniper in hand, you have to expect it's probably gonna be a nasty headshot to follow. And that was certainly the case here. And things continue to be nasty for Booga and Agers though. Booga now having to function as a solo. Not an easy spot to be in. Not at all, not at all right now. Not only is this, this zone like, tough to play off of, but again, doing it by yourself now. It's going to become that much more difficult. Let's see it, though. Booga definitely keen to have survived. Let's see how he lost his teammate, though. His Aegis did have two eliminations, so clearly he gained something for it, okay? So he finds Carlson there, and it seems like right afterwards it's Bolts who claps back, puts him down. Booga fortunately wasn't able to get the save there in time. This time around, he is going to pull zone though, so he's pretty pretty situated. 
we should say. And those Wings of Icarus, like we said, plenty of charges as well on those. He's got the mobility, Taco. He, he's going to have not a problem staying alive, I think, for quite some time. But can he get the damage, right, to sustain his way through? Because probably going to see something happen there. Yeah, that's the real unfortunate part, is that we've approached that time of the game where getting a reboot off is essentially impossible, even for somebody like Booga. So positioning is going to be absolutely key as far as his first lobby of the day is concerned. Well, this team right here, Briga and Monty, you can see a lot of teams relatively central. But as the zone continues to pool, you can expect some early rotates to come out as well for those teams who are a little bit more concerned about making sure that they don't get caught out on the rotate, especially because of the fact that the zone, it's just a decent body of water that these players are having to deal with as well. I saw Quanti and Chubb still alive as well. They made it in successfully from the north side of the zone. It doesn't seem like surge has been an issue for them. Right as I say that though, Monty finds Quanti there. So <laughs> let's see if all that saving of Chubbs was worth it. All the time invested here in this game. Time is also crucial in these types of formats. Time is currency here. Let's see it. Edging clips right now. No eliminations just yet. But of course, consistency is everything here. Booga in the box across from him. A body of water potentially separating them from safety here to come. But no, the zone comes south, so everyone else is going to have to edge their way towards this team here. But things are still relatively painful for Edge and Clips because that damage threshold only 29 above. I'm not saying they're desperate just yet here, MDF, but odds are they're going to have to pressure into somebody's box soon enough or find some really clutch shots from a distance if they want to maintain their strong positioning. Because you can have the best positioning in the world, but if you don't have the search to go with it, it's basically all for not here. And Max, Smiley, getting forced out of so many of their materials down to just their last bits of metal as Max trying to find a way to tarp through. But again, a lot of congestion starting to build on these low and mid-ground layers here. Fizzberry Juice also running incredibly low. Max does not have the loot that they need, and they know it. A refresh certainly has to be on the mind. Yeah, tough spot to be in right there. Had to double all the way back just to get to his teammate there, burning much more material, so... They're wearing and tearing down on the little bit that they do have. Little bird's eye view puts Booga at the front side of zone. And again, you can see just the, the veteran ship kicking in here. Booga who knows how to constantly position himself to have the highest advantage here in these end games. And Clips, let's see if he can do the same here. Much different spot for him to be in though. No shields here, so more cautious here. Peeking out, trying to gather information. Zone's going to bounce back here. Now to the eastern side. And he's a fair bit below the damage threshold, so this is not going to... It's likely not going to end very well for him here as the damage is starting to tick on. And okay, he's going to go to heal instead of finding the rotation first. Let's see if it ends up paying off. Eclipse is just hoping for placement at this point, seeing if anybody else can be elimed first, but... It doesn't seem as the Eclipse is going to catch a lucky break here anytime soon. There they find is. a moment, but the shots aren't going to be enough. Oh. Still needs a little bit more. What? And finally, <laughs> that last hammer pump going to solidify 70 above the damage threshold, but still so much ground to cover here and not many materials to do it with. What are the odds? The team edits the wall, closes it, making it just weak enough for the single axe. Let's go ahead and take it down. Just a little thing sometimes that connect, and now he's just moments away from a little bit more placement. Finds a little refresh. Okay, so he's got the material. No heals, though. This water is so dangerous, but you get the dash. Use it to get into Booga's box and past him. And all of a sudden, there's another duo there. Booga slips out, sensing danger nearby. And look, although likely tempted, he knows better. He's just playing the front side of his own, soaking up placement points right now. He's got his wings out here, eyeing up the high ground. Don't do it, buddy. It's a good team up top. It's Cease and Jack here. We're playing this one out, and look, dashes to the front. Love to see that here. Position himself back up again. Gives them 
just enough room to work with here. And this is where utilizing your dash has become a little bit more prestigious, right, when you're on high ground. For sure, but it does appear as though Cease expended his final underworld dash. If he gets chopped out anytime soon, could be in some trouble, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's Skittles and Trashy playing that low ground. Decent chance, though. They might even end up running into Booga if they continue tarping through these frontside moments. And in fact, it's going to be Booga just a layer above. Was so focused on the team directly in front of him. Doesn't even realize Skittles and Trashy blasting him from underneath. And finally, Skittles going to find the elimination confirmation onto Booga. And just like that, his run's going to come to an end. What is Tavern doing right now? He's trying to find his way outside and around here. And he takes so much damage there, just putting himself in position. His teammate nearly taken out in the rotation process as well. Any of these tags slip through, and they're going to be in a very, very bad spot. Someone has to start splashing or something ASAP, but no, he goes for the fishing first. That could be a mistake. We'll see. Those are win conditions now being utilized up. We had ideas here for potential heal off. We'll see if NA ends up going in that direction. So far, it's electric here. Threats and Sphinx. Another set of eliminations, bringing them on up to five now. We're comfortably approaching top 10 here. Cease and Jack have to be very cautious of allowing teams to get too comfortable, to give them too much time to bounce back and forth between the zones, sliding back and forth, and they'll likely find heals. They'll find med kits, right? They'll get that win set up. But what I'm looking at so far, Monster, is all of these loadouts are not boasting the greatest in terms of heal off. Tavern might be one of the best ones we've seen so far with the two floppers and five splashes. But again, it's all about making it to that final moment in the first place. Jack running every which direction up above. Cease still helping provide a little bit of suppressive fire from the high ground. And again, it's probably going to be Jack to play Disruptor here soon enough. Out of builds entirely. Sankey can be set for Evan. Tries to tango with Tavern, but it's not going to be enough. Tavern with another elimination. Five in total. Edgy having another three. But Edgy, he's so incredibly low. It's only a matter of time before Tavern chooses to try and utilize some of these splashes. He's actually running further into the zone. Going to take his chances with the heals that he has. Akichi also trying to hold on, but... Only one more med kit left to work with here, Monster. Yeah, no, I think Cease has got it. Cease had two heals in the inventory there, including the med kit, so things should be just fine for him. And this is what I talked about. Allowing teams to, you know, not get too comfortable could have backfired here. And luckily, Cease's competition didn't have much to work with. And just like that, they win the game. And they didn't just win it by freely walking their way through the endgame. No, they had seven eliminations to go as well, Taco. No, they definitely did a fantastic job playing that high ground, making sure that there wasn't going to be anybody that could sneak up on them from that secondary height either, Monster. It, it's just exactly what you would expect from such a veteran player like Cease and Jack as well, doing such a great job at disorienting players that were starting to build in some of those more congested layers inside of the mid ground. Yeah, I was a little concerned. Jack was a bit passive up top. You saw those 30 seconds left on the clock there, but... He turned up just when it mattered most. Find a set of eliminations. And just like that, the first highlighted game of the day goes to Outlaws. Cease and Jack there for a big win. Zeke, update us, though. How you feel about that one? You know, Monster, this is NA. We saw quite a bit of heal offs over in the EU, but NA and NA, we don't like that. We're like, no, 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 you're going to heal off. We're going to try and chase you down. We're going to try and do everything we can to make sure you've expended every possible resource that you have. Now, Cease, as they pointed out, he just had just enough in the tank, right? You got Jack rolling around, finding, isolating these duos, just kind of disorienting them, like they said. And it's because of that, Cease is able to come out on top. I mean, Cease and Jack, shout out to them, right? They had the high ground going actually into some of those moving zones. And a big point as to why they were actually able to hold it is, you know, prior to this, you can see that they, they definitely have it established right here in 11 zone. But because of where the zone was actually positioned, look at this, it's in the northwest region of the map. And before Cease and Jack actually went up to the high ground, they made sure to dip their toes in that green river. So they had dashes to actually use to help hold the high ground. And it ended up saving them so many mats, right? They didn't necessarily need many refreshes to actually hold the high ground throughout the entirety of the end game. And as a result of that, Cease, Jack, they win the game from Heights.
And I love the teamwork that we're seeing here. Jack throwing the med kits over to Cease. While Cease stays out of danger, Jack's going to go down, try and grab just a few more points through those eliminations. It actually does a pretty good job at it before he goes down himself. And that med kit is what allowed Cease to survive and make it all the way to the end, beating out the other players for that heal off. So awesome to see Cease back at it again, coming out with a big W here in NA for week number one. I'm surprised we actually didn't see more of like the aspect and the medallions coming out. You know, aspect of agility allowing players to kind of attack that high ground. So I would have expected someone to be up there, but showing on the mini map, if you kind of looked at that before the game was over, that junk was down the storm. So whoever had that, they were eliminated. They didn't have an opportunity to use it. So uh, I feel like it's not quite the chaos where we've seen quite yet, if that makes sense. Uh, still definitely a, a good game there and somebody else who had a good game and just game number one it's gonna be tavern check out how his game went and uh, yeah zeke you know first game definitely delivering for na of course going to that heal off right there but as you can see look at this zone tavern and edgy already positioned very very well going into the nine zone picking up a refresh right here it's so good. And just being already on that south side when that zone's actually pulling to the south side, all of those north teams had to kind of come towards them. Then, of course, having zone kind of pull towards them on top of the refresh, they were able to tarp for so long and put up a top four position. Shout out to Tavern and Edgy. Yeah, I love their positioning in this match right here. It seemed like they kind of flowed easily between like second high and all the way to low ground there, depending on what the best situation was. So Tavern walking away with five eliminations, joined by Edgy's three, that's eight right there. And that's why we're gonna be seeing them up in our leaderboard right now. Only in 10th place though, but I'm, I'm seeing some big names up here, Zeke. Uh, yeah, like, absolutely. Oh. We'll go for it. I was gonna say, Ma is already in third place and, and I believe we have a special shout out for him, do we not? That's right. I believe it's the Muzz's birthday. So happy birthday to you, Muzz. We hope to see you stay in that top three as the day goes on. But as you could probably, some of you might be wondering, wait a minute, we just saw one victory out. Why is there a bunch of ones on that right side of the screen? It's because we have a bunch of lobbies all kind of going on at the same time. We just tuned into one happening. So with that in mind, how do you guys feel like just this initial like starter game played out? Do you guys feel like now that we're going to be hopping in and out, kind of weaving between these lobbies, things could look more, less chaotic, different? What do you think? I think uh, one thing that I definitely noticed in game number one right there, right? Because we're not playing set lobbies since there's not a set number of games. I feel like we saw a lot of early eliminations throughout that game, right? So maybe a little bit less stacked throughout that mid game can mm. kind of shift the game in one way or another. So pay attention for some aggression as we kind of jump into some of these games. It's also interesting because with these lobbies, the way that they are, a lot of the top competitors that are getting into the top five, top 10 are now going to be queuing up together. So these yeah. lobbies are going to be harder and harder. And on the opposite sense, the players that went down a little early are going to be going up against other duos that have gone down early. So it's going to be interesting to see how these lobbies evolve. That's right. Well, hey, we're ready to get back into all of the action. We're actually going to tune in with Peterbot and Poyo and see how Ooh. things are going yes. in their game. get right into it with of course one of the teams that we expect to put on the performance here today and what, what are the odds he's going up against mini peterbot here <laughs> on the west side of the map of course he's got a fan and this is what happens when you're just this good but you know i think true peterbot's going to show him how it's done here as boy you already have four eliminations here so it does seem like uh they're they're in the zone taco there can only be one and I'm right there with you, Monster. I think that it's going to be Peterbot. It's the Peterbot show regardless, but Agent Peterbot looking to make their debut here in one of our next lobbies of today. And if there's one thing that Peterbot and Poyo love to do, it's box fight. But Peterbot takes a massive tag from his alter ego. Still comes out on top for it. Banana going to get dropped there from Poyo as well. Just waiting for Peterbot to create a little bit of space. Does get an opportunity to pick it up and expends it. And now, exclusively Sports trying to do what he can to keep this box fight engagement a little bit going still, but jumps through the window. Mantle maybe catching Poyo a little bit off guard here, but it doesn't make a difference. In the end, it's going to be Peterbot and Poyo who cleanly wipe out Sporks and Mini Peterbot, and now 
Ranks, by the way, just been hiding this entire time, just praying that nobody realizes he's still sitting around. Uh, I'll be honest, I think Ranks is making the, uh, the right move here. Uh, <laughs> this, I, I don't think he should move at all, actually. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot going on here, though, of course, as we're just jumping in. Tons of action. In fact, let's jump back in with Boyo and how he got that fourth elimination. This is Ranks' duo here. You can see Boyo, tip-top shape and form here. In our perspective, we might think Ranks is uh, low-key. However, Boyo's probably going to go check to see if he can find the rest of that duo. He's not going to forget that one there. Now jumping in with Costa and Zypha here, who are on the move north side of the zone here. Just eyeing up, hawking the perimeter, making sure things are good, but they see some builds out. Use the dashes here, because they're going to get replenished anyways, then right on in this keying of a team right now. And I think this is going to be the trend, right? We're seeing all of these games very much fast-paced right now here for the qualifiers. You have to maintain a certain number of eliminations if you want to be up at the top. Well, especially when you're dealing with a lobby that has Peterbot and Pollo in it. They've been breaking records and establishing themselves in NA as of late as the elimination warlords of every single lobby that they're in. And so you've got to be quick with it. Otherwise, you're just not going to have an opportunity to look for surge because Peterbot and Pollo, they don't waste any time. They are aggressive for a reason. It's the same thing that Thrill and Swax are trying to do. And then a bandit on the other end. Tomato Tickler as well. We a little go. bit of a theme with that duo. Getting right back into it. Peter by Boyo though. We're already on to the next duo here. You can see they got a little bit of a split angle here. Boyo focused up on the player on high ground. Peter Bot chasing a one down low. And really teams, only teams that are super confident can play like this. Splitting up, trusting in one another. Go ahead and handle business. Just like that, isolate him out. One mistake and it's over. You're sent right back and it's kind of crazy. You watch Pito Bot and Boyo run through players just that quick and they'll do it to a player of any caliber. They take advantage. They play confidently. And it's crazy too when you consider uh, Peter Bot uh, typically taking over IGL responsibilities between the two of them. Poyo though, just such a strong fragger in his own right. It comes as no surprise, really, to see how frequently they tend to split apart whenever they're looking for those hyper-aggressive initiations. And for good reason, again, that team just has so much trust in each other. Or if anything, they know that the other will back them up if things do tend to go a little bit south. But they're already making quick work of the teams that have unfortunately come their way as is. And that's going to leave players like Xerxes and Xy or Xo just on the outskirts of some of these POIs, hoping that they can get some surge damage online before things go a little bit too late. Because again, the longer it takes to get that surge online, the worse off you're going to be as far as those rotations are concerned. I definitely agree. Can't spend too much time here. NTMZ's got an opponent. Duo all the way across, duo to the other side. Oh yeah, look at this, look at these bases. Folks are <laughs> set up all around them right now. Much different dynamic right here at the at the center of the map, if you will. Seems like on the outskirts, everyone's king, everyone's pushing. You get center, you get east, and basically everywhere that's not the underworld, you know, uh, dash locations, if that water's not accessible, everyone's pretty chill. But things change. Get to this side of the map. Champ and Scissor. They're going to be just outside in between Restored Reels and Pleasant Piazza. Chimp, though, seemingly spotted out what could be uh, a moment for Chip and Scissor, but no, instead, default to rotating. And Peterbot and Pollo, they found their next, what's looking like to be a victim here is. Veloc doing what he can to try and create some space, but if there's one thing about Peterbot and Pollo that they hate doing, it's leaving eliminations. And that's why Velo, he's just gonna get completely ran down. Underworld Dash, plus the Fizzberry. It just covers so much ground here for Pollo. Neely tackles the other side of this box here. Velo gets a 
decent tag back onto Poyo, but his health is just so extraordinarily low. Trying to get that small shield potion online, but Poyo's not going to give him a chance to fully heal. Just again, continuing to harass Veloc with so much pressure. And now it's going to be Peterbot on the backside, but Peterbot's not even needed. Poyo has already gotten the job done. And that knock almost makes me wonder, MDF, where was Velo's duo throughout this entire exchange? I have no idea. I thought they were chasing a solo. Meanwhile, it's a whole team. Peterbot blind checks the bush, turns, there's a team in there. Misses every tag. And just like that, and the heat's on him. But again, they're already on the Flowberry Fizz effects, right? So you can see how quickly they can maneuver, reposition. Just make it that much more difficult to track down. But Boya was here. Boya finds his tags, and look at this. Conversation is always surrounding Peterbot, but Boya, such a complimentary duo here. S highly skilled. Very, very talented. And you can just see confident, regardless of what down to 57 HP though. Now it's Peterbot's turn to go ahead and turn things around here. Put a little pressure on and the pre-fire there on Tacosta was great. For the one-two now into Zypha. But again, Peterbot and Poyo, they are not letting up. Peterbot especially. Zypha and Costa also having expended a decent amount of heals just oh, to yes. hold on. Uh, Peterbot's just trying to make it end quickly, but Zypha gets a little bit exposed. Wall at it opening up in a way that he did not anticipate. Now Peterbot on the wraparound, going for the flank maneuver here while Poyo continues to aggress on the front side. But Poyo, one more time, shield have been cracked, white HP exposed, Zypha, Costa, still the same line of sight though. They might not realize the fact that Peterbot's looking for that flank engagement still and just continuing to apply so much pressure here as Costa continuing to build out. But now it's Peterbot on the back foot. It's gonna but take what a second doing. here. This is what they're doing so well. Boyo's not even pushing in. He's just keeping pressure up, keeping them distracted. They do this for one another to see if the opponent lets their guard down, overwhelm them, essentially overwhelm the senses, right? Walls being tagged, pressure coming in from all angles. It's Peterbot who's really trying to get close and personal on the walls, but it's Boyo who's putting that constant pressure on. And look, cutting them off, looking for angles just like that. All of the small advantages, and look at how he slowly backpedals as well while he's putting these tags in. You have to respect it. They they play this so well. Hold but up, no, Peterbot. Not only that, but they're running so low on build. Poyo and Peterbot, they didn't have a choice. They had to continue keying Costa and Zypha. Finally, Poyo gets some reward here with that elimination. And Peterbot as well. But again, as you just pointed out, Vert still is on the other side. They could potentially look to lock Poyo and Peterbot inside of the storm this storm is doing a lot of damage silicon verk here you cannot miss those tags it's gonna be the last few times you get to get freebies on him because you know exactly what duo that is right there and just like that boy and peter get themselves into the safety's edge here but for how much longer can they keep up this pacing that was a very very drawn out battle and you can see it's wearing on the loadout here now that dash medallion is just so insane because again, yeah, Storm was doing a decent bit of damage, but Poyo, Peterbot, they, they don't have to entertain Vert and Silic. They literally just dash right by them. Now looking to aggress a team. But no, instead, gonna opt for a quick rotate. Trying to say some materials. He's going right into it. That's what the dash can do. Peter Bot takes full advantage. And I saw it coming. The opponent unfortunately did not. And then makes the fatal mistake. You just invited him down by breaking the builds right there. And they're back. Fully back now. God tier With refresh. The show for it. Everything that they needed and then some. And now Sheila Convert. They're going to have to try and deal with a very healthy Peter Bot and Poyo. Can expect that engagement to be rather problematic. But checking back in with Banana Bandit and Tomato Tickler. Just kind of lurking around the low ground for the time being in a decent position. Zone's gonna pull just a little bit further east of where they're currently situated here at Pleasant Piazza. This could be a nice opportunity though for Banana Bandit and Tomato Tickler to get some surge online. 
definitely have to do something. This lobby's gonna need a little bit of life because otherwise there won't be much left in it. But Chimp and Scissors here are definitely doing just that. Down bodies around them and they're already at eight eliminations. Pressure coming in from a multitude of angles, but they're more focused on freeing themselves up here. Have to leave the refresh behind. This could turn to backfire them. Now they do have heavy material. There it is, the swap out. On the other side, Peter by Boyer get closer and closer to 20 eliminations. This is quite the game already. We expected something big, of course, but to watch it unfold firsthand in real time is definitely something different. Okay, but Chip and Scissor with 10 eliminations themselves, they're definitely keeping a decent pace there. If we're, if we're looking at elimination counts between Chimp, Scissor, Peter Bot, Pollo, now Chimp. Gonna look to try and wrap around edge of zone, but it's gotta be careful. A lot of teams already stacked up inside the center area, but Chimp and Scissor, they're able to claim some of their own space. And we're right back to the Peter Bot, Pollo show. And it doesn't look like they have any intentions of slowing down just constantly forcing their way into all these other teams' boxes, breaking down walls, breaking down edits, but Pollo, a little bit lower than he'd oh, like to be. Peterbot oh. actually gonna get knocked. He, it could be disastrous now for Peterbot and Pollo. I think he's done enough. I think he's done just enough to go ahead and not only clutch up and save his teammate, but you see, you see how the dash medallion is so versatile. Pollo was almost taking out Dash's back, puts himself in a position, and you know, your opponents are just so frazzled, like they, they have no idea where you are. How do you track in real time like that? And, and, and that's what po uh, Pollo and Peterbot do so well, tracking amongst the chaos. They just have full control over the situation. Meanwhile, Ch Chimp and Scissor, uh, just completely different type of keying going on here, right? precise and and I feel like more tempered right as they're choosing the duos as opposed to you know fighting everything that moves around them they have so much damage though almost 20 300 and then some above the threshold vert gonna pick off fur dice and Peterbot managed to get himself back to full 200 so one more time, just gonna continue running it down with Pollo. 16 eliminations in tow. Low ground menaces at this point, but wouldn't be surprised to see them look to try and tackle high ground. Gonna trade that aspect of agility for a moment just so they can both get their dashes online. And just like that, see Pollo and Peterbot immediately up top. Oh Viper stood no chance. Before you can even react at all, wall down, they already have high ground. And you're done. You're taken out. And you see them use the Flowberry Fizz strictly offensively. Meanwhile, Chimp with the 180 onto Lime sent them right back to the lobby. I know he's second guessing pushing this demon right here, who is definitely in the zone right now. But sometimes your run does have to come short. The Slappy finds him. Scissors taken out not much long afterwards. And now it's Peter Bottom Boyo's show to go ahead and run from the high ground here. 18 eliminations. This should be looking like at least a 20 piece for the duo here. As they continue to pressure on. Knowing Peter Bot, he's not going to be satisfied with anything less than 20 at this point, Monster. And you can see Poyo, Peter Bot just continuing to tarp through the high ground. Even if they get chopped out, they don't have to worry. They've got dashes to expend. Poyo can apply some pressure into Curfew's box. We'll manage to throw up a wall in time. But again, with Pollo just bearing down on your builds above, massive shots, gonna connect and finally curfew. Basically delaying the inevitable at this point. He does get knocked, cleanly eliminated as well by Pollo. So much disruption and just like that, Pollo already back up to high ground. No issues reconvening with Peterbot, who's just laying down ample suppressive fire. He's got that Thunderburst SMG up high and doesn't look like anybody can threaten their position currently. They swap the medallion so effortlessly as well. The strategy is there. You can see how much better the team is getting as a duo. Meanwhile, on the low ground, Burt and company break their 10th elimination here. But it should be all fun and games here. In the end, it's Peter Bot and Polio who are running with it. 24 eliminations and a single. Is that Day? Day still alive there. Just holding on there in the zone. 
Is he going to be able to outheal this is the question right now. And doesn't look like it. The gas tank is out. Boyo waits for him here. It's only going to take attack here for the elimination credit. There it is. And a 25 elim game there. Taco sets them up just right. I almost felt like I was just watching a cash cup for a moment there, Monster, because time and time again, Peterbot and Poyo just putting on a full display of exactly why this team cannot be allowed to have that aspect of agility the moment that they make it out of Grim Gate with that coin in hand. It just seems as if it's practically impossible to stop them. Just so much momentum riding on this duo leading into today's competition. Yeah, it's like they're playing a different game. The, the speed of which they can, you know, move around, outplay you, save themselves, right? It just gives this team a little too much of an advantage over the opponents. And it truly does show here. Peterbot and Boyo take the second win as far as the lobbies we're showcasing so far are concerned. What a game there, Zeke. Uh, okay. So we just came from like the game of four, right? That was like a, a, a game of Fortnite we're kind of like used to seeing, you know, like, oh, high ground and like everyone's like heal up. Oh, that's crazy. And then we get uh, ga this game, okay? And this is why the community is kind of saying, FNCS is just theirs. Just give it to P Poyo, give it to Peterbot. Just look at what happens when they have this coin, when they have the opportunity to just destroy a lobby. 25 eliminations. That's a new record. I, what do we even say, Vivid? <laughs> um, yeah, like you said, a new record for most eliminations in round four in NA. And uh, Kelly, they actually broke their own record, right? They did have 23 in major number one open qualifiers. And, and just there already early on in the season, breaking it with 25. And I think that's the thing, Kelly. It's very, very clear to me that Peterbot and Poyo, they're not motivated by winning events anymore, okay? They're not okay. motivated by winning games. The only thing they must care about is setting records. <laughs> Listen, I mean, right there, we just saw them have about 3,500 damage above Storm Surge at Zone 7. Oh. I, I saw them take down Mini Peterbot, which was a heartbreaking tale to tell, but Poyo <laughs> and Peterbot, you can even see here, even when Peterbot goes down and Poyo is at a sliver of health, they're still able to collect themselves, come back, and absolutely dominate the end game. And Obviously, a lot of that is due to the aspect of agility found in Grim Gates. And of course, we can't ignore that mythic gatekeeper that we see on Peterbot. But both of these players, uh, you know, a lot of people like to say, oh, it's the Peterbot. It's the Peterbot. But Peterbot and Poyo both just bring so much to the table. I don't know what anyone can do to stop this domination. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, watching them fight through some of the mid-game, like, interactions that they were having with other duos, the thing that's very, very clear is that, you know, usually when you're in like a 2v2 fight, you, you kind of want to help your teammate kind of apply pressure. Usually we'll have these situations in 2v2s where it's like 1v1 versus 1v1, like two kind of separate, and whoever can kind of get the advantage can help pressure the other one. But the thing with Peterbot and Paulu is they both mechanically can like 1v2 the other yeah. duo whilst their teammate kind of applies pressure as well. It just works so well for them, and Zeke, that's why they're at the top of the leaderboard. So remember the start of the show and Kelly made this like really beautiful graphic and she kind of pointed out, oh, there was like these big, you know, swinging point thresholds that these guys are just ahead of everybody else. Here we are already starting to see that come to fruition, right? These guys have truly put on a show for us. We have to ask ourselves, how do we stop these guys? Most recently, we had them stop when like in a cash cup. Most of the lobby was like, look, okay, everybody, just land on them. Every, just, every, just throw yourselves at these guys and just someone please take them down. These guys have to be stopped. Is there any other way we do this? Is there any, is there a duo that can help? I, I mean, honestly, duos have been throwing themselves at Grim Gates over the cash cups. People have been trying to take them down and it just isn't working, Vivid. Yeah, if they get a hold of, of come out of Grimgate with that medallion, the mythic weapon, it's just looking too good for them, right? And of course, we did actually get to witness their second game right there. And the reason why I know Zeke, they're going for records because their first game, 
They survived all spawn as well. And I was like, oh, so they went down. They went down about nine minutes into the game, which tells me that, yeah, they made it off spawn, but they were just W keen. So I would not be surprised if we see another 20 elimination plus game from them over the course of the next couple of hours. I hope. Well, let's hope so, because honestly, as crazy as it is, I'm down to see these high elimination games. Now, we are ready to jump back into all the action. We're extending by. We got Ma uh, Macwood. We got Blake. Let's see what they're doing in their game. That's right. We get to jump right back into the swing of things here, this time with Macwood and Blake here. Once again, we get to jump past all that early game stuff as we're doing wide coverage of the rolling lobbies happening right now. Taku, you said before, there's roughly close to about five lobbies or so happening, right? Exactly. And something else that Kelly so kindly pointed out is the fact that teams that find themselves eliminated relatively early on, well, you have to remember, they're going to be playing against the other duos that also find themselves being early eliminated. And that's a position that Macwood and Blake certainly not trying to find themselves in, but it could be the case here for Azures and Booga. Azures doing what he can, try and buy a little bit of time, but caught off guard. Thorfinn just fully ripping open Azures' box and really not much left to be said. It's Thorfinn, Hades, two eliminations. Have to imagine that the other one that they collected was probably on to Booga. They do have a decent amount of ground to cover. Banana certainly gonna help them with that. Gives the imitation effects of that aspect of speed, but for only 25 seconds. Still, it's gonna be enough here for Hades to at least escape the storm while also refarming some materials. And that double takedown from Thorfinn and Hades, just nasty stuff onto Booga. Yeah, he didn't even get to put any damage back down either. And I don't know. I don't know if Aviv would have allowed that to happen, Agers, you know? I don't know. <laughs> We're just going to have to see. <laughs> that, let me not, let me not stir anything up. From you. Listen, Agers is a savage. It's a joke, guys. But you know he's probably clapping his uh, Kanata, if anything. <laughs> that will yeah, be the go, one <laughs> ringing out the celebrations like, that wouldn't have been me, Agers. But not me, buddy. Big like shot from Pump, though. Down rage. Nice body tag. And look, immediately keys on in. Npen not wasting any time here. I want to take this fight. Love to see Npen and Pump find a tag and then get into a positioning. I thought for a second they were, they wanted to fight, but no, took full advantage knowing very well that team was going to have to stop and heal. So I like how quickly Pump and Npen close the gap, though. As soon as that sniper shot connects, they, again, understanding the fact that the other team's going to have to heal, but closing the distance is going to make it all the easier to essentially try and key that other duo's box. If anything, it at least puts them in a slightly better position to essentially overtake them on the rotate. But they're not the only duo that's trying to situate themselves currently. We've got Bucky and Okus, who, quite honestly, their round three quals really came down. Okus had an absolutely insane clutch for a, a last lobby, Victor Royale that shot this duo up into well within the range to qualify here for round four. But things were definitely looking a little bit shaky as far as round three of opens was concerned here for Okus and Bucky. And they're looking to smooth things out through their efforts today. Oh, jumping in with Solution in this duo here. They already have a down player on the other side of the wall, the pressure coming through, but who's gonna push from this team here? That's the real question. You see a night and day difference between how some of the ultra aggressive teams play versus a team like Solution and Duo here, right? The baby face Ooh. let their guard down, wasn't quick enough to finish the battle, and now you allow other teams to get in, and just shows you the the layers of complexity in these types of box fights. Timing is everything. Now the baby face is just going to get pushed back here. It's the victim of Scolds, it's a team that has seen. There are fair amounts of FNCSs. Nah, you know that Yuma and Flinty are basically going to be asking convicted in scolds for the <laughs> PayPal after that. That bailout was insane. Babyface had full rights there in this duo to take over. But yeah, that backside getting caught off guard, it just, it's so easy for 
teams like Convicted and Skulls to essentially roll up for that third party action. And it's also kind of expected, depending on how long this exchange has actually been going down. So I'm just saying, Aviv would have closed that wall, all right? <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Just one more time, you know, in case anybody missed it. I'm just going to start memeing it. You know, Aviv would have did that right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Possessed in Larson, two eliminations right now. On the move right here to get east to the save zone. A lot of duos sitting around wasting time, but they're one of the ones that want to move early before the storm starts to put a little pressure on them. We do know Enpen back with Blake. This is all the general area they were situated up at. Zessen Larson looking pretty good right now. Take a little break here. See how it fares for a second. Yeah, that early rotate definitely needed to happen because as you can see, they had to scale the face of that hill. And again, it's already still posing some issues for them being one of the later teams, despite having gotten such an early jump start compared to some others trailing behind them. Possessed and Larson definitely still have a little bit of work, still a little bit of effort that they're gonna have to toss in here. A lot of material having been expended there also. Possessed nearly out of his cards entirely. It's gonna be Larson who's gonna have to split some of his mats with Possessed. And again, the pressure is just never ending at this point. But at least they've got their damage threshold being above. Don't want to worry about taking any of these Storm Surge tags to go with it. And that's the problem here for DeMarco and Coleef. They're trying to desperately apply some pressure onto Larson and Possess just because of the nearest duo to them. But they want to make sure they're not being exposed to getting eliminated in the process. It's a very temper duo as well take their time not one to get themselves into anything too ca not too crazy just showing that veteran chip right now they're gonna give up the fight and instead play for more positioning but Marco and Kali have a completely different game on their hands they need to fight here and now and I think this is gonna become more and more evident these eighth zone surges turning online Lobbies can move as fast as they'd like, but once you get around this position, your damage will matter. Your activity in the game will have mattered. Not only that, but also a lot of teams are going to be able to recognize which duos are actually struggling, which teams are essentially desperate for these surge tags, because most duos, uh, they're not going to waste time spraying the teams that are, are rotating at the last minute. And for DeMarco and Coley, it's almost impressive that they didn't get punished more heavily for it. But you can see them one more time here again. Shields fully cracked. Now they've drawn the attention of Antonio and Zeno. And they won't even be able to get a chance to pop that medkit. Coley's still trying to keep things alive here. Three medkits could be a blessing for anyone else that might stumble across it. And it's all down to Coley to just try and get the heals online. It's got to be careful, though, because he's still got to make it into the next zone. Blake super hurt here. They are going to find Convicted. Still a down body. There goes the finish. He had a medallion on him as well. Okay, so a lot to gain from these set of eliminations here. There's going to be huge upgrades right now. Larson and Skold super damaged as well on the move there. Just like that, Macklin and Blake have a real chance here. Going to take this one. Comes the dashes. I'm sure as he tries to get himself into the zone as well. Already ticking from the effects of the banana here. It's going to keep him healing now as he's on the move. Shots from behind, though. Misses a wall. It's that Bucky that might have gotten the elimination there. And Okus. Bucky at least getting credit for the knock. And now Sprite. Just looking for a moment to breathe. Wants to try and get one of these small shield potions off. But again... Not going to come in time as that surge threshold continues to bear down on some of the teams Chubbs, in this late game. He's height. Chubbs is out of nowhere from the edge of the zone there. I think he used the Underworld Rift. Dashed his way to high ground. Not sure if he was successful or not, but Okus and Bucky here tearing up the mid-ground layer. Now they also have a chance to do something big here, but man, even with these eliminations, no big heals to play for, nothing to really show for inside the 
inventory either as far as upgrades are concerned so the little things do start to add up eventually you have to ask yourself can you do something more with your game here high ground now finally starting to focus here on this layer to jump down or challenge the only two options meanwhile larson finds leon there who might have ran out of material at an unfortunate time there defense lists up against them Bucky and Ocus also jumped down a high ground, so they give up that mid-ground layer. And Jasper puts up an excellent defense here and finishes off wow. Bucky just like that. Unfortunate stuff there for Bucky and Ocus, but when you consider how pressed they were in terms of their heal situation, it seems as though it was almost inevitable at that point. But again, Chubbs, Quanti, way up top the rest of the lobby. You got Antonio looking for a chop opportunity, but even if he is successful, Chubbs and Kwani have control of that server's medallion, like we believe. A chop isn't going to really impact them all that greatly, since they can continue to just dash right back up to height. Still, that's not going to deter Antonio. Looking to tarp directly underneath them. Looks for his own challenge even onto height, but Antonio might have bit off a little bit more than he could chew here. Kwanti and Chubbs all too prepped for their defense. And they're going to push back Antonio no problem whatsoever. But they are running relatively low oh materials. God. They offer the drop down. Quanti though, that just slightly height leverage. Big plays though from Blake, finds a refresh when he needs it most. Man, still holding it down right now. Ian fights his way into the top five, dropping two duos. Nine eliminations for Blake right now, who is having the game of his life, the run at the moment. Now this may not be set up for a win, however, he can continue to earn more, and he does just that. And now it's a good old 2v2 here, low ground versus heights. Both of the experienced duos are in the game, but Chubbs thought he had an opportunity, but Dill, little did he realize Pump and Enpen were actually set up. Didn't take any damage from Blake there in that exchange, and now Enpen plays for the win here. Three medkits, but quanti has got four, and it should be all she wrote here if the math is good, which it does look good for Quanti here. Unless storm sickness happens to play a part, but wouldn't really expect that to be the case for Chubbs and Quanti. Quanti more specifically, as Mpen finds himself rolling down to his last couple of med kids here. Quanti still plenty more in tow. And unfortunately, like you'd already mentioned, MDF, Mpen, unless he finds a flopper or something big, it's gonna be wraps and sure enough, Quanti securing the victory royale here in their second match of the day and couldn't have come at a better time here mdf because that's certainly going to be a bit of a confidence boost for those two yeah they really did have to work for it uh the, the target for high grab from Childs was actually extremely impressive because he pushed height by himself at some point or another and then quanti came to meet him and finished off the elimination so if it wasn't for Childs's push there those were those two critical eliminations then this win wouldn't have even been possible. And just like that, the game does come to an end there for Quanti and Chubbs. Congratulations for the big win. So let's toss it over to the analyst to get us caught up on the numbers now. Thank you guys so much. Once again, if you're just tuning in, this is week number one of major number two. We're just bouncing around games. We've got a ton of different lobbies all kind of going on at the same time. And we just got uh, done with this one. Again, congratulations to these guys getting themselves the victory royale on the day. A lot less of a chaotic game from one we just came from with Peter Bon Pollo, but still for Chubbs and Quanti, kind of going back to that textbook win we're kind of used to seeing, right? Really ticking all the boxes, making sure, hey, look, when it comes to that heal off, we know we have what we need. We just need to make sure we execute correctly. Yeah, that game actually is is pretty big in terms of storylines for the season, right? Quanti and Chubbs, of course, Kelly, with them kind of winning that game, Peter Bott and Paul, kind of already winning their game, means that already in session one, qualifier one here, they're, both duos are kind of looking like they're going to get a lot of serious points, which means it's, it's kind of likely that we're going to see both teams in that upper bracket, potentially, where, of course, you do have to get top 50 in serious points. But another thing that I kind of want to point out, right, is that Quanti and Chubbs are kind of like the duo that are trying to take down Peter Bot and Pollo over at right. Gate, right? There are the ones that are stepping up and trying to challenge them over them in, of course, set lobbies when they are actually able to face off with one another. But uh, I was kind of keeping my eye on Quanti and Chubbs here and their loadout, and it actually did not seem like they had the aspect of agility or coming out of their coming out of Grim Gate with the mythic gatekeeper shotgun. So 
maybe kind of conceding it in these these sort of lobbies and maybe only opting to go for it in set lobbies i don't know I, i'd say that I, i'd give my tip my hat to peter button poyo for actually committing to the drop spot in that regard yeah, I love the differences between these two duos, even though they're both landing at the same PLY. And I think that showcases just how much variable there is in the FNCS. I mean, when you have 25 elimination VR compared to a five elimination VR, it's hard to see the differences there. But regardless of the situation they're in, they both were able to clutch out a victory royale. So congratulations, of course, to Quanti and Chubbs. And this is actually a new duo, so good to see some synergy coming out of them. Yeah, it's like a statement, right? Hey, look, we could get Victor Royale, Speederbot, and Poyo. We are also going to get a Victor Royale from you guys, potentially, maybe. I want to see that. Let's take a look at the standings with so many lobbies kind of all going down at the same time. What, what does this look like? What does the landscape appear to be right now, though? Clicks and Epic <gasps> Whale. All right. Wow. Got themselves in that number one spot. These guys have really been putting in so much time recently. If you watch either of their streams, they've really been putting in time to refine themselves and kind of prepare coming into major number two. So it's exciting to see them in this spot. Wow. Yeah, awesome to see them up there. I mean, I got I to gotta give a huge shout out to, to Blake and Macwood, specifically yes. Blake. I mean, Blake on an individual individual level has been playing so well lately I mean in zone wars tournaments have kind of been going on around the scene he's been playing very very well kind of surprising a lot of people with how well he has been playing and I know he keeps making content about how he's been like 1v2ing some teams throughout some of these tournaments so Blake kind of peaking right now on an individual skill set level and then you know, the fact that we're playing duos it's kind of translating into also his ability to solo clutch just like he did in this game right here yeah, this is one of my favorite moments where Blake starts off with seven eliminations. You blink and then it goes up to nine right there. And he kind of had a lot to go for him. Of course, we have the Mythic SMG there, as well as a legendary gatekeeper. So he definitely had all the right resources to give him these incredible plays. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say nine eliminations? I meant ten. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the movement looks good. The edits looks good, right? I mean, these guys are just looking good we actually started the day with uh on cease and jack we saw them get that initial victory out still holding in that number seven place but as we kind of flip on over we kind of get to see more of these names uh you got acorn and cold they're in 14th again with all of these kind of lobbies happening this isn't like the set lobbies we're used to seeing right one game a duel might go in and they say okay we're against peter bottom poyo whereas in that next game it might be someone else or uncontested so it's really cool to kind of see how this is all playing out out right now i am kind of curious though to get your thoughts as when the time comes will set lobbies be that much different oh a hundred percent right like some of our teams right now are just dropping so many eliminations and that should technically be near impossible for most of our teams when exactly. it actually comes to those but i mean hey listen you mentioned acorn and cold they dropped a 16 elimination game of their own kelly so they are looking good right now and also when you come down to it, it comes down to the lobbies, right? Having the same duos landing in the same spot so yeah. that you kind of build up a meta with inside that tournament is so vastly different than not even knowing who is going to be around your POI. So, you know, this isn't the best indication of what we're gonna get for the grand finals, but it's definitely a little bit of a taste of what we can expect. Love it. Love the breakdown. Of course, I know what you guys want. It's more action. I wanna see more gameplay as well. So let's just jump back into it with our casters. All right, let's get right to it. This time we have Walkers and Fatch up on the pedestal here. And on the other side, Kanata. Don't see his duo nearby. Where is Cooper? Was he already eliminated here as we're jumping into another game? It does seem like there's a hint of Peterbot in the ingredients as well. As he's wrapping up Lawrence there in the feed. So, Tacos, we start to gear back up and get into the swing of things. I mean, what's your take on the competition so far? It does seem like uh, the veterans are up at the top as they should be. It's it's about what you would typically anticipate, but something I do find interesting is that at least for this point in the match today, our top five in the leaderboards, four out of five of them are duos that aren't newly formed. So they're duos that have been playing together. So I do think that it's clear Ooh. that there is definitely a benefit the team sticking together, continuing to build their synergy. But that's a tough one for Kanata to have to eat. Just watches Cooper get obliterated by that sniper shot. And Walker's got to be feeling pretty good about that one. So it does seem that one elimination that he was carrying 
It was definitely going to be kind of like a thorn in the side there for Kanata. So now he's got to worry about getting that reboot going for Cooper, if it'll even be feasible this match. And again, we talked about it already, but Peter Bot Pollo, as soon as they start lighting up that elimination feed, you have to expect that it's just going to be a, a reoccurring theme, essentially, as Pollo, Peter Bot, they've locked on to a possible engagement here. Josh and Kong trying to throw up some walls to create a little bit of distance. But space is not something that Poyo and Peter Bot like to give to anyone, much less a team that they've locked eyes on. And Josh and Kong, they got to be careful because there could be company on their backside as well. Find themselves potentially getting pressured from two different teams, and that is the worst case scenario for anyone. Take a look at Peter Bot here. He's putting on the expert course on how to key. You can see they do it well. They don't just mindlessly jump into dangerous situations. They time it. They try to do it perfectly there, but Boyo gets punished, but Pewterbot is here. No damage taken in that exchange, which is probably more of a surprise than anything else. Now has to fend off a whole team here by himself, and we already talked about this. Pewterbot and Boyo basically play as two players who are trying to constantly 1v2. They just so happen to be on the same team, basically. That was such a nasty shot, though, from Peterbot onto Anox. Essentially forces Xerx and Anox to stop in their tracks. They were interested in that key initially. They saw that Peterbot was looking for that revive onto Poyo, but again, the dashes just so problematic. Kong and Josh just didn't even know which direction to initially look. They yeah. get that knock onto Poyo, and it just doesn't even make a difference with the way that Peterbot just so flawlessly jumps into their box and there's a reason he's considered one of the best mechanical fraggers on NA right now and if that doesn't put it in 4k for you I don't know what will yeah it's not it's not just that he's good is I think it's specifically the fact that they have this advan this advantage with it with the you know dash medallion basically right like I I genuinely believe that alone just gives them so much so many options <laughs> And it's just too much. You just can't track them. I don't care how good you are. Once you're put in that situation, there's going to be a little bit of luck involved. And you and your team just so happen to make and target the right player at the right time. Because if you don't, you got Peter Bot in the corner like that. You don't even know he's in the box with you. Uh, you know, and before you know it, you're taking out. And look at the bounce back, though, from Kanata and Cooper. Ooh, the Four eliminations. Game. The reboot definitely successful. Although, Kanata, Cooper, they're trying to claim some space here on the outskirts of Reckless Railways. Doing a decent job to kind of supervise where exactly they need to tarp next. Got decent control, but at the same time, Kanata eats a little bit more damage than he probably would have liked. A lot of his materials being forcibly expended here as well. It seems as if the entire lobby is just focusing these two out right now. I will say, just looking and judging by the player list of names I've seen so far, there is a significant increase of more notable names in this lobby. And the fact that, still, we're jumping in with so many duos that have, you know, a good amount of elims, like for like all things considering, is still, you know, all in all very impressive. We might just see Peter Bot Boy up against Cooper and Kanata right here. Yeah, they're trying to eliminate the distraction of the tree here. So options, options. They're looking around here. Is there threats nearby? Little did they know that team is under storm surge right there. You saw the, the bolts come down. You can tell Peter Bot was looking for that headshot snipe, though. Won't find it just yet. But again. The aspect of agility just so problematic, and the moment we tap back in, it's going to be walkers again causing problems here for Cooper and Kanata. Unfortunate. This time he's trying to say stay down, but no walkers also getting punished in the process. Fat's going to get knocked as well. Meanwhile, Peter Bot Pollo, they finally come to break up all this action taking place between walkers, Fatch, Cooper, and Kanata. Pollo and Peter Bot. They want the leftovers, and they might just get it at this rate. It's Pollo continuing to aggress into any box that he's got in front of him. 
The Boyo's awareness is kind of crazy right there. He was fully focused on taking down walkers. And I think we've all been in those situations. You play with a duel and you're like, bro, I need your help. And they're they're like tunnel zoned, right? They, they It's like they don't even hear you. <laughs> but no, like Boyo stops everything he was doing on the dime, gets right back to PewDiePie and supports him. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. It's little things. I mean, 10 eliminations in this lobby as is. You've got yeah. to keep in mind, in their earlier game that we spectated, Peterbot already had more elims in that one match than all but one other team currently has combined. Impressive records and just an impressive performance. This Fatch finds himself as the victim there to Peterbot. Yeah, I, I guarantee you any one of my friends list would have left me there and not. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, honestly, MDF, I, I think anybody would leave you behind if Peterbot is there. Probably. To be fair. Yeah, I, I would agree. Take a look at the front side of zone right now. Golden Cow's here. All zone puts a monster shot down, but it's not enough to back him off. They're still there, still nearby. Danger lingering. 12 eliminations now for Peterbot and Boyo. Jumped away. We come back, and they're sitting on a fresh set of eliminations. Wings of Icarus there. I do wonder if Peterbot wants to, but no. He just plays so well with oh. the Fizz and the Dash, and look, right on up into the territory of the opponents. No time wasted. Peterbot fails to jump, but Boyo's there. Pressure's already on. Other teams looking in now as well. Just look at the mechanics of Boyo as well. Even under the pressure of the server, we all know what it's like. It gets really difficult to do anything. They just make it look like they're playing on some monstrous rigs or something like that. Like, if they're in a server of their own, it's crazy what they're able to accomplish here. And they just don't stop the pressure. It's just the fact that even with Peterbot and Poyo both eating tags, it, they don't stop. There's zero hesitation. The moment they go for height, they just fully commit to it. The Zircon trying to do what he can to keep his duo's hopes alive here in this lobby. Finally gets a moment to try and pop that shield potion, but Peterbot again. 15, 16 eliminations. Now as Poyo picks up another one. It's looking like they want to break their own record of the day. Yeah, just before that, it was obviously Poyo on the run. This time it's Peterbot, who's definitely carrying the eliminations right now, but it's a joint effort. They're so good at individually keeping up the pressure, not letting it slow down for just a moment. Even the edits right there, great angle there from Poyo. But positioning is going to be more important. Winning this game is still crucial here. See here, Peterbot jumps down. There's a couple tags there. Fizz as well. He's not worried about that. He wants the players. He wants to finish the job here. Cuts him off. Comic is on the run. Another tag there. Oh, where are you going for, tag? High ground is not free, buddy. Also, peep the fact, I believe Peterbot's also got that aspect of siphon from the underworld so Poyo Peterbot in control of what appears to be two different medallions Swap still there. full control of the high ground as well doing a lot to ensure that nobody can try and pressure them from secondary height Peterbot still continuing to drop down into these mid and low ground layers he's not even looking for the refreshes of materials he just wants the eliminations and he's finding them one after the other 13 eliminations already for Peterbot. She tries to close in on Convict, and sure enough, one more gonna be added to the count here. 20 elims all together for Peterbot and Poyo. And that's gonna do it because the lobby has finally closed their second victory royale of the day, MDF. And it is just unstoppable work from this duo. Yeah, definitely. And, and the, I mean, the tracking was just insane. Was, he knew exactly where these players were headed, and, and there was just nothing you could do about it. He checked every nook and cranny to find all those eliminations. They were determined, if you will, to get the 20 eliminations. Take a look at this right here. Sigma hops right on up to high ground and just gets deleted. These are eliminations that were missed on broadcast. And then, of course, the few that you saw, the tracking, the, the good work and the continued aggression, even out of difficult situations, is just admirable and impressive, to say the least. And, you know, Peter Bot and Boyo are doing exactly what we expect them to do. So I know Team Agent's happy, Exceed's definitely happy for the pickup and Boyo, and 
They continue to do it back to backs now. Zeke, I mean, what, what, like, what do, what do you have to say about this? Uh, you know, I've got nothing to say. Uh, these guys are good. Uh, and what I think we, I think how, how we kind of shape this conversation is like, okay, we, we've established they're good, right? And this is something that we here on the desk are actually talking about between the games, right? Is it just the coin that's making them good? No, right? It, the coin is obviously helping them be better, but these guys are just that good. If, if no medallions existed, and this was just a world where Peter Bot and Poyo were just rolling around the map, the effect would basically be the exact same. Now, of course, that medallion helps them rack up more eliminations and helps them be way more aggressive. But this is only kind of amplifying what they are just doing by themselves. Yeah, I mean, if they weren't better than anybody else, right? And, you know, the, the medallion was really enabling them so much. and anybody could quote unquote do it let's not forget kind of the format we're playing right now there are games going on right now that just simply do not have peter bot and Poyo in it right it's impossible for them to be in every single game and to have the medallion every single game so there are other teams out there other duos out there that have the same exact equipment as them and uh you know we're not seeing 20 plus eliminations very often throughout this in fact i'm pretty sure it's only peter bot and Poyo so far to actually drop those numbers so on an individual level as a duo Peter Bot and Poyo deserve all of the respect they're getting. And then right here, what, what is this? Uh, I mean, you just bring out your sniper and nose scope something from like 50 meters away while they're flying through the air. Okay, okay Peter. I, okay. I just look at this situation that they're in. They're on high ground. Peter Bot has one of the best loadouts that you could possibly have in the end game here. He's dropping down when there's still five other teams left over and just going for these eliminations because he knows even if he goes down, Poyo is a force to be reckoned with just on his own. It is absolutely insane what this duo can do and it wasn't just the the uh, aspect of agility that they had they also had the aspect of siphon yeah. I, I can't mention enough just how scary this duo is right now 50 50 total elimination zeke 30 on peter bot and 20 for Poyo. oh my gosh these guys are going absolutely insane here. And just think this is just week number one, right? So of course, once we get to set lobbies, this won't be quite this crazy, but there still has to or be an acknowledge acknowledgement of like, these guys are very good. And if they are allowed to kind of get going, this will happen in the finals lobby. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it, Kelly. You say that these aren't set lobbies, so they're not going to do this when they are, but they did this during the cash cups as well when it was set lobbies. So, of course, in first place with an almost 70 point lead, it's Peter Bot and Poyo with 50 eliminations, almost or more than double of any other duo. We could really talk about them forever, but just one more crazy stat to kind of throw out there. Not only do they have twice as many eliminations as the next closest team, but Peter Bot by himself with those 30 eliminations has more than any other duo, Zeke. I don't even know what to say anymore. Yeah, I mean, even just look here, right? You've got uh, Cooper and Kanata there in 14th and in 15th, Dukes and Noxie, right? 23 eliminations, even down to 18th, Death polarized at 25. I mean, these guys are just that much better and, and and i'm not exactly sure why like maybe people are just too scared and and we kind of actually saw a little bit of the gameplay there when peter bot uh, and Poyo were pushing these duos on the other end they're not looking to fight they're just running away right so these guys it, this season is just really catering to their play style right whatever it is whatever they've really tapped into they are firing on all cylinders and they're really trying to make a statement when we hit the grand finals we're gonna do this so if you want to try and land on us, please, please try. We'd love to see a 20 bomb in, in grand finals, which I don't know that we've seen yet. But man, these guys really are just a step above the rest. Again, the question I must ask is, can anyone else stop them? Uh, compare in some way, shape or form. I don't think so. Maybe stop them. I don't know. I I think it's a possibility. Although I was saying just a few seconds ago that in the cash cups that they were even able to win in a set lobby. I think when it comes down to these grand finals, we've seen them kind of slip up a little bit. And a slip up for them is literally getting second place in major one. So <laughs> not the biggest slip up that could possibly happen, but I think it's there's a possibility i don't think it's challenging grim gates because that hasn't worked out so far no. but i don't know i don't know what to say 
Yeah. And again, we, we're looking at this in the lens of like, this is just week number one, right? Week number one, it's like, let's just try and put points on the board. We're trying to earn series points so we can make it to these upper and lower brackets going into semifinals, right? And then in grand finals, this will be very different. When the set lobby happens, we'll start to cement players where they're going on the map, and this will look very, very different. Right now, though, these guys can just go off. You know, they can be absolutely wild and insane. And it's 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 respectable, right? I, I have to look at it and go, yeah, you guys are crazy. What do you want? What else do you want me to say? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of the, the cool thing, too. Right? Let's not forget we have two weeks of these qualifiers, right? And and seemingly so after, you know, let's say, Pierbot and Poyo kind of win this week number one round four, they'll get so many, so many points that, uh, that they'll already be secure. And, and next week, they might not even have just a little bit more fun. But let's go ahead and stop talking about Peter Bot and Poyo. They are so dominant, of course, but other teams are doing well. Crisp and Byla showing up during that end game. And oh my gosh, this is kind of a cool duo to kind of form right there. Chris kind of jumping in right there, forcing Byla to pop off in the solo clutch. Still does it, still pulls it off. Yeah, and then, you know, we were just talking about Peter Bob, but Byla there, one of his old duo mates, it's good to see that regardless of who he's doing up with, that he can still bring out some top competition there. But there are so many big names right now in our top 10, top 20. And this is just week number one, but you know that they're trying to get as many points as possible because they want to be on the upper bracket of the semifinals. So I really appreciate these duos giving it. They're all starting from day one. That's right. And as you say that, I'm getting word games are ready. Let's jump on board with Edgy and see how their game is going. There you have it from one set of action into another. We get to jump in what's happening to Edgy here. Right around that seventh zone. So this is very much into the end game here. Blake is also in this lobby turning up online. As you can see, and, and Taco. I mean, yeah, the standings, Vivid's calling it a little early for the Peter Botafoya <laughs> show, but they, they have, you know, at least a game's worth of a lead right now. Look, one thing that is always important to keep in mind is that we are, in fact, not dealing with that true set lobby that yeah. Grands is going to be able to introduce. And as far as Peter Bot and Poyo are concerned, only Kwani and Chubbs, masters of the drop, could stop them but as for today when the world needed them most they have vanished don't think that they've actually had an opportunity to be in every single one of peter bottom Poyo's lobbies today as is expected but again when you consider an individual like peter bot with such a strong contested off spawn win rate being at 68 percent 50 percent is already good 68 percent it is just ridiculously strong and so yeah yeah those two are going to be a, a, a tough factor to, to work through yeah we, but, we saw the standings i mean you have acorn and cold right like uh, reigning champions in 29 still very good right like all things considering up at the, the upper bracket right the upper half or, or segment of, of the total player base but that is you know not close as far as overall performance is concerned in these types of settings and then you get to true finals lobbies and, and that is where everything has to connect positioning players play different players play more passively they're not taking as much risk and if you're the player taking all the risk i mean you're gonna get third party you're gonna get punished um at, at every turn of the way and also it's just week one teams gotta you know sometimes you gotta kick the jitters out right you gotta you gotta get your groove on Hit the reveals, right? Teams are going to progress and just get better by the end of the season. So ultimately, finals is going to be a much different, much different team setting, undoubtedly. Yeah, that adaptability factor is going to be key for a lot of these teams involved. Even through this format style of, of just the, the nonstop lobbies, essentially, between all 250 duos, because uh, again, what worked even in opens leading up to these weeks, it, it, it's still not necessarily going to be the same strategies that are, are going to make you guarantee that you find yourself in that top end of leaderboard, get those series points locked down. Surge seems to be the, the priority focus as well as a nice rotate. Sprite and Shore, Shore looking a, a little bit worse for wear here. So that's going to be Sprite tossing over. 
couple small shield potions, a med kit. Make sure his duo gets back to a healthy position to make their next series of rotates all a little bit easier to come by. Looks like M-Pen's also in this game on the backside of the zone. Mars is here as well. Paired up with uh, Pars here. See how Pars and Mars end up doing right now. A little trade of some heals right now as they're definitely at the front side trying to lead the zone rotate. All in all, the restored reels. Not a place you want to be boots on the ground at. The terrain gets a little tricky there. Ooh. Couple of players nearby. Mars definitely not one to be aggressive. Not known for his mechanics as far as fighting is concerned. He plays well. He knows how to position himself. He knows how to take his time. He's definitely one who... I feel like, uh... You know, sticks Ooh. to the slow and steady wins the race, but... When forced to fight, Mars puts a couple tags down there, so so far so good. Definitely needed those tags as well. Onto Sprite. It's gonna put them just above that damage threshold. Now sitting at 217. They were initially 50 below, but still a lot of pressure filtering its way towards Mars and Par here. They've got to be careful. They're trying to see if they can commit to staying towards the front side of zone. And meanwhile, high ground gonna find themselves towards the backside. They were just trying to take some tags where they could. But it's so early on. Almost have to expect that's only a matter of time before some of these other teams in the lobby start actually trying to turn their attention towards that high ground. You can see it. Little outskirts rotate here. Oh, Mars bossed up a player on accident. <laughs> it's just like that, he finds himself at the front here, but he loses part in the process. Everyone left to play by themselves. Meanwhile, Tavern and Edgy, the team we started with, continuing to turn up. Blake, once again, seems to be on a solo tear here, clutching up the points here. Nearing a top 10, but there's still a ways away here. So he's now down to six material, four material. Much, much less here. Can he find an elimination? Probably not <laughs> gonna be that duo there. The Devil's back here. Tricky, tricky plays here. No, couldn't find hey. anything there. The tag, the knock, but not enough to get the finish and keep him alive in the game. So Tavern's now by himself here. That's a nice sabotage, though, from Blake because Tavern was tarping through the low ground pretty efficiently with Edgy, but having lost his duo, now he'll be forced to play more towards this backside of zone. You can see him still committing to the low ground. Mars directly on the other side of this wall. Tavern running so incredibly low on builds. This could be the refresh he needs. Just a little bit more materials. Going to be enough to circumvent himself forward and out of the thick of the action. But again, breathing room. It's just so hard to come by here. It's Tavern constantly on the move, constantly trying to stay ahead of the action, ahead of the congestion. Now he's looking for a pickoff. Par gonna run right by him, and sure enough, Tavern with another elimination here. Strong pickups across the board. Every placement counts at this point. Yeah, playing it well right now, but the duo's gonna jump into his box. The damage goes down, but it's not enough. Meanwhile, high ground has changed hands several times. Now Twix the Kid and Laywin is up top here at three eliminations. You still have Bucky and Okus in this game right now playing the mid-ground layer once again. They seemingly have found themselves extremely comfortable in this mid-ground layer, making another end game here. This is surely going to push them up somewhere towards the top, but Bucky does get taken out there as they had no material. Okus doubles back into the zone here, trying to squeeze out what could be a heal off, but... A little too soon here. 30 seconds left on the clock, so Okus is not going to have enough. Not just yet. Exclusively playing those med kits just for placements at this point. Understanding the fact that as a solo, it's going to be difficult to tackle. This team currently on the high ground. Twix, some nice shots connected onto Hazens, but it's oh Hazens with the fight back. Excellently played there to sabotage the team on height. And now, this could be a prime opportunity for Dash and Seek to run away with it for the Victor Royale here. Oh yeah, definitely. Dash has the advantage. He's, he's at the front side of the zone. Okus, it was just a matter of time, but he stretches those med kits out into a second place for him and Bucky. We talked about those placement points uh, starting to rack up, and they do just like that as they, again, found themselves in back-to-back -back end games. Really good run so far for Okus and Bucky.
that was just such a, a quickly reduced game in terms of player count overall though mdf i felt like we were just moving from the moment that we first tapped in to see what tavern edgy were up to and we saw all the clutter kind of taking place with some of these teams but a nice victor around gonna seal the deal here for dash and seek i'm sure zeke and the analysts have more to say though we sure do. Congratulations to Dash and see getting themselves a victory out with eight eliminations. I love that Monster D-Face called out that every point is so important, right? For these guys to get themselves a victory out to really kind of slow down the pace, especially as we're kind of talking about suddenly we're just moving, right? You've got a ton of people. They're all trying to eliminate each other. They're all make, trying to make a play for this victory royale. But for Dash and see, they really slow things down. Okay. Okay. What do we need to do? We need to get this victory out. This will potentially catapult us up the standings right because we're playing for series points so to see them get this victory out and with the eight eliminations as well you know they're feeling really good about this oh yeah this game was uh was a pretty wild one actually you know kind of jumped in and during 11 zone there really wasn't that many duos left alive i don't even think 12 zone actually fully closed before we had an opportunity for this game to really close out but seek and dash just taking full just seeing that the high ground team was getting beamed of course they had no mats up there it was twix getting beamed by somebody who was actually playing halo on the back side of zone it's all that they were getting damage dealt to them and just went up and stole the victory away yeah and i feel like dash and seek deserve a little bit more credit than than we tend to give them they did get 15th place in major one so this is a duo that's stuck together and definitely has a strategy going into it sticking to the low ground here able to kind of pick off these players that are dropping down unbeknownst to them kind of like a one of those trap spiders that just waits for <laughs> someone to drop into the area and grabs that elimination and then they just kind of play it smart from here on out they know that it's going down to a heal up so they go look for where the other player is and they're able to convert that into a victory royale you love to see it let's take a look at our settings i want to see how things are shaping up now there were so about halfway through the competition you've still got peter by you've still got Ooh. Poyo up there they are still doing awesome things but let's start going kind of down this list we've got clicks and epic whale we kind of touched uh, uh, on them a little while ago but looking acorn and cold there in the third place really uh displaying like hey we won last major we're here to try and we don't need to win. We're already going to globals, but we're going to make life for everyone else quite difficult. Yeah, great to see Seek and Dash actually, you know, top 10 right there. Eighth place after that game. And you know, shout out to Clicks and Epic Well right now. They're playing really, really consistently. Probably the most consistent out of any duos. A second, a first, and a fourth, Kelly. They're, they're looking to do just a little bit better than they did FNCS last major, right? But it's going to be hard to kind of top that fourth place. Yeah, I love to see the differences between Peterbot and Poyo versus Clicks and Epic Whale when it comes to their points. And I'm excited to see how they're going to do in the next game. Well, guess what? We've got a treat for you guys. That's right. We're going into our next game locked in on Peterbot and Poyo. So let's see what this game uh -oh. looks like from their perspective. I mean, it's just a matter of time, right? You know, <laughs> odds and evens, you know, eventually the coin has to land on the wrong side. But for now, seven eliminations in, hasn't done that quite just yet. Peter Fuyo, keeping up the pressure here. I just opened socials for a second there, and I realized that Peter hit a no scope, by the way, in that end game that we called with the sniper from like four or five tiles up, he had a 303 headshot while cycling through his shock in here and it looks like he's trying to do it again Taco. it's almost effortless for for peter bot and Poyo he's at like this literally point. trolling at this point every single time though that we tune into these guys's perspective i'm less looking at what peter bot and Poyo are doing and more so who the victims seem to be and right now it's sandler and jay sick trying to do what they can but oh. again peter bot oh takes the wall instantly dashes in and just obliterates sandler now jacek forced to fend for himself but he won't be left for much longer it's another two clean eliminations here for peterbot and Pollo. max mats i mean you couldn't possibly ask for a better loadout at this point and looking at some of those teams are kind of sprinkled throughout mount olympus have to expect that that is exactly where Peter Bonapoya want to be next. It's not even about getting into zone at this point. It's just 
it, it feels like they just want to keep establishing records for FNCS in terms of eliminations. They're playing a different game. They, they can't it have that like dash. It. They just can't. Like, it, it just, they, it gives them too much of an advantage. That right there just shows you how, how fast they can close a fight regardless of what. Cooper and Kanata on the move right now here, trying to make up for the downed times we've seen them here so far. I mean, they've had decent performances. Nothing extremely standout just yet caught on broadcast. However, they are still floating upwards on the, on the standings as far as overall things are concerned. Not great, but not bad. All Kanata wants at this point is just to ensure that he's in a higher spot on the leaderboard than Agers. <laughs> that, that is, <laughs> I always love uh, lurking a little bit of the, the Kanata streams. He absolutely goes crazy, high energy throughout. But I do think it is rather hilarious at times. We all know, especially if you've ever been blessed enough to watch a Kanata interview, how funny that guy really can be. But it definitely a, a lot of focus towards placements uh, for more reason than that. I, they obviously want to try and secure themselves a good amount of series points leading into next week and the week soon to come. But but, but I think I think too though it's important for him to yeah if he can bring Cooper to those end games right like we know what Cooper's capable of and this is a new duo you have to you have to really think about it so I think placement being more placement heavy is, is going to be much more important for them especially as they start gearing up for the actual finals lobbies. Kanata knows I think more than anyone that Placement points can get you so far in the standings. For sure. Have a feeling where this is headed next. Poyo decimating Noah Baby. Peterbot destroying Gloom's walls. And again, just leaving him nowhere to run. You can see here the dashes. Ozone. How do you even expect it? You can't even anticipate that. Trying to escape from underneath his own cone only to run directly into Poyo's clutches. And that's three eliminations, back to back to back. No time at all. The, the time to elimination as well for Peter Bot and Poyo has, has got to be ridiculous right now. Yeah, that double dash tech looking pretty slick. And I mean, I think you're right. In the past, you know, re notorious for time to Elim, essentially being one of the highest alongside Miro. And now we're seeing a, a new throne. <laughs> I think, and, and in that throne, you got your boy Peter Bot sitting right there, strong and pretty alongside Boyo. They're both just crushing it so far. Veer and Freeze, they've had their set of highlights so far, though. They they have seemed to found themselves in a cadence where they're landing inside these Peter Bot lobbies, so it can't be easy by any means. But when the zone pulls towards this southeast side of the map, it can be really tough to deal with all the elevation changes involved. And that's something that's going to, again, be a massive advantage here for Peterbot and Poyo since they do have that aspect of agility to share between each other. You can see Peterbot already looking to move. It's going to be Ozone and Golden yet again. And a little bit of trouble here, especially with that medallion having just been dropped. Ozone and Golden, they're bound to know. Yeah, that's got to be Peterbot and Poyo right up above us. Instead, Peterbot... He wants Kale, but it's not going to come that easy. Kale trying to escape, but where can you really run when Peterbot is involved? Some nice tags along the way, and Kale trying to escape for dear life, but just can't create any space. The dashes are just too powerful. I'm just sitting here and I'm like zoning out. Like I'm just like hyper focused. Like what is he going to do next? Like, he's just cutting players off. He's going. Absolutely Ooh. crazy with it, but finally gets caught out a little too overexposed and tries to hit the sniper bail shot, but no, couldn't find it. Now Boyo has to defend for himself. 88 tag, and another duo comes in, and Boyo finishes one, but can he get the second? The crosshair was there, but no. Finally, the Titans fall at 15 Elims. They you know? roughly 20, yep, 20th spot there. A kind of a deserved punish as well. Peter Bot just editing open that wall, fully exposing himself. <laughs> you can just tell that he is playing with full confidence to go for aggressive engagements like that. But again, there is some bite back, some signs of life from these other teams in the lobby. And now with 
Peterbot and Poyo's reign having come to an end here. And with those medallions having been given up as well, the aspect of agility, SWAT chance. It's a new team that's in control. So curious to see what they do with that aspect of agility or if they're able to hold on to it for the duration of this lobby. Yeah, it's a good time to find it right now. The zone's pretty brutal here. Cutting all the way. Kanan and Cooper, I feel like I have a chance now to do something big here. Still got a long ways to go though. You can see here everyone with decisions to make now. Nada wants to lead first. Knows the team up there. Doesn't trust it at all. Senses are right. Spot on here. There it is. They got to move on and... Wow. Oh my gosh. Shreds. Is that Zircon there? Straight <laughs> out the sky. Absolutely disgusting tracking there for Kanata. Can't say I'm surprised to see it though. Certainly been on point throughout the course of today. And again, like we just been talking about earlier, getting to build some synergy alongside Cooper for their end games. And this is a prime opportunity for this duo, despite being newly formed, to possibly look for their victory royale in this lobby. But again, nothing comes easy by any means here as Jiven and Encrypted, another team, managed to make their way up the hillside, get through the worst of some of these elevation changes. But again, these zones over Brawler's bottle ground, they tend to be quite vicious with how often they can force players to go up and down these hill faces. Yeah, Jiven definitely needs to gather these materials here. A pretty desperate situation to be in. Things are gonna work out for him. He manages to get a little bit to work with there. This duo encrypted is off to the races, trying to play for high ground, so they spot out. No one's set up. And this is that odd terrain here. This is one of the advantages of getting in position first now. They don't have many maps, but they have enough to at least put up a front here for a second. Kanata and Cooper burning through the Midnight Oil as well, down to just 100 metal here. It's going to be tough. They definitely need a refresh. Kanata seemingly spots out a solo. And he's gonna take it one step further, just fully collapsing onto Donkey, who continues to run, but can't really escape for much longer. And again, some nice materials picked up. The most important aspect here for Kanata and Cooper, it's all that they are really after, after having expended so many of their masters to skill this hillside in the first place. But look at Ziggy and Phnom, way up top above the rest of the lobby. They might have prime pickings here for everyone else scraping by underneath them. Yeah, I was wondering what happened to the team with the, you know, the dash, basically. <laughs> it does seem like Ziggy might have the effect. I see the underworld icons tailing behind them, and it makes sense that they have the high ground. Teams that, of course, have the ability to skate across just to move at a different pace, but... Notice what they aren't doing is putting enough pressure, in my opinion. They needed to take full advantage of the high ground, not allow anyone to get comfortable. The more that they pressure down, the more likely other teams are going to start fighting, whether you know they're there or not. Obviously, you want to do it without getting picked off. But Kanata and Cooper on the low ground here are doing good work. Another refresh for them. That's going to set them up to at least have something to work with now. This is, again, putting them in a great position here, but it's going back and forth, Taka, through all these old builds, through this territory here, and this is why players are just ratting their way up. There's a lot of players alive for such a, t a small zone here. It's kind of scary as well, because when you're running through all these old builds, you never know if somebody's just trying to sit inside of a cone, sit around side of wall corner even. Can Beans, Owl, they're gonna be another duo, getting a bit caught, trying to tarp their way through the mid ground. And doing a decent job at it, Ken, actually leading the charge here. Or his teammate Owl, done a nice job establishing some space in the mid-ground again. Phnom, Ziggy, haven't really been applying a high amount of pressure here, but you can see that water bedding Mythic coming out is now Phnom trying to take heed of these secondary height teams. Doesn't want to allow for an opportunity for somebody to actually come and challenge them up top. It's got to be careful, though, given that if they lose sight for even a moment, some of our more experienced teams might look to jump their way up. That is true. Here comes a double Fulberry Fizz here to go in and cap off Cooper here. 
the low ground is theirs. Not a team in sight, except for this one down low. And in they go. Cooper was super hurt. But he tanks the first two tags, giving Kanata just enough time to rack up the set of eliminations with the high ground teams. Hear this. They put in pressure. Kanata's going to play for solos first, thinking about this potential save second. But no, it doesn't look likely. At least it's top five so far now. It's Adam. The edit comes through. And Kanata puts him down, but now he has to heal. There is no other option here if he wants to stay alive a little bit longer. He won't even have room to edit out. This will just be all she wrote here for a second. Meanwhile, Phenom has, I'm not even gonna do the math, a lot of chug splashes and a couple bananas in the inventory. And there it is. Doesn't even need to eat him. The splashes do enough to lob him to win the game there. And Ziggy and Phenom, they seized their opportunity. Peterbot and Pollo, when they were initially getting pressured, it was Ziggy and Phenom that were one of the teams to instantly pounce for that third party opportunity. And it paid off dividends here at MDF because you could see that aspect of agility allowed them to control the high ground for basically the entire duration of these final zones. And with 15 splashes, Phenom just taking his time, dropping all of them. But that's going to be a W secured, and we've got the analyst to break down the rest. My gosh, Phenom single-handedly cornered the market on uh, every splash in the entire game and <laughs> said, this is all mine, and I have three bananas as well. I mean, th there was no losing that heal off. There's just not, I mean, I guess Storm Sickness could have played a part, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for Victory Royales. And for them, they picked themselves one up, especially now as we're starting to kind of hit the tail end of the competition. This is kind of where these guys want to be, right? This is a huge point boost for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, nothing like winning a game, boosting yourself up. And as you can see right there, 125 points, taking into consideration, you know, around 64 points for a win right there. It's going to be a majority of their points definitely coming from this game right there. So a big swing for them. And as we know, Kelly, every single placement in these round fours matters a lot, right? Because you, know, you just want those series points and all those placements that you can get definitely bump you up. Yeah, and it's good to see the uh, the water bending coming out there and, and showing up a little bit. I know that we got to see that in the EU, but for the first time we got to see that here for an NA Central. But yeah, the splash is there at the very end and they barely had to use any of them. But I love the preparation. They're understanding what the meta is, especially for these open lobbies, and they're setting themselves up for victory. Yeah, I do want to kind of like hype uh, or rather focus in on for a moment is Kanata. I was curious to see how these guys have performed on the day, especially kind of uh, with this recent change up, right? But I feel like these guys are really starting to, uh, you know, figure out what they're all about, you know, especially when you're kind of changing duos potentially like week to week. There is kind of this synergy you have to build up. And for me, the question mark was like, okay, you're Coop, you're leaving Miro for Kanata. Like, is that going to work? And I guess the answer is yes. Yeah, that's what's so tough about forming new duos is, you know, you kind of have to learn what your duo is really capable of. Of course, we know that all of these top tier competitors, they're, they are capable of a lot. You just have to kind of like fine tune that, okay, what can I trust my duo with in certain situations? What can I kind of expect from them? What do they kind of like to do in certain situations, especially when making IGL calls, right? So it'll be a little bit of a learning curve for Kanata and Cooper, but you know, lucky for us, this is just week one, qualifier one, Kelly, and this is a long ways away before we actually are in FNCS final. So they have plenty of time to fine tune. Yeah, and, and even though we're saying that they're, you know, not performing to what we can expect them to, they're currently sitting in fifth place right now, and they haven't placed below 19th at all. Oh. So I think we're just kind of missing the games that they're in because they're they're doing a pretty good job right now. Although when you have teams like Peter Bon Poyo, who still sit in first place, pulling out multiple 20 elimination games, it's kind of easy to overlook all these other duos, but we can't put them down. A lot of these other duos are competing incredibly well and making sure that they get enough series points to set themselves up for the semifinals because as we know in Fortnite, week two could be something completely different in the open <laughs> qualifiers and a lot of duos could potentially not even make it into round four yeah there's been a little bit of that in eu right some of these duos are like oh yeah they should have made it through right they didn't the competition is just that much crazier you know it continues to elevate major to major especially as we get closer to global championships everyone's thinking hey more spots available we have to try and lock one of those down now you brought up the gods of the lobby and in this last game we saw they can bleed finally the lobby said enough is enough and they kind of pushed them out of this game but they have been an absolute tear Ooh. i mean we've already seen multiple 20 bomb games out of these guys 
I mean, Peter Bot and Poyo, again, they are just firing on all cylinders. They're aggressive playstyle paired up with the aspect of agility, really just allowing them to kind of turn things up to 11. I mean, these guys are just on another level. And speaking of 11, I was actually, uh, you know, I was messaged in 11 uh, in between games right there while this was going on. And, and he was talking about the, the aura that kind of Peter Bot and Poyo have on the NA region, right? The reason why they're able to maybe dominate some of these fights so easily is because people respect them enough to know that they kind of like can't win fights or against them or it's not in your favor to actually take a fight up against them. So whenever they see somebody kind of dashing towards them and and mechanically a little bit, you know, above the rest of the competition that they're used to seeing, maybe they're kind of like saying like, oh my gosh, this is Peter Bot and Poyo. Like we got to play a little bit more defensively. We're scared now, right? So they kind of have that or the, the danger zone, you could, you could kind of call it, but that's kind of implemented in everybody else's minds. Ooh, and here we have our current standings. Of course, Peter Bot and Poyo still in first place, but Cam and Amenis jumping up into second. But I, I do need to talk about Clicks and Epic Whale because you're looking at all these duos. You're seeing how many games that they're in, how many points they've earned. Clicks and Epic Whale have only played in three games right now. They, like you said earlier, Vivid, they've gone a second, a first, and a fourth, which makes me think that they're making it to the end game to another game. So compared to Peter Bot and Poyo, who've played five games, or Acorn and Cold, who's in fourth who've played seven games, I really think that speaks to the ability of Clicks and Epic Whale. Oh, 100%. And yeah, the fact that, you know, they're still in that game right now, you, you know, you consider the fact that they may actually win that game, get a couple of eliminations, they could go up about 100 points, and then they would actually overtake Peter Bot and Pollo for that top spot. So that would be very, very cool to see coming out of them. Yeah, these guys definitely have the potential. I mean, even like what you guys are saying, they've not dropped the game outside of that top fifth, right? So they are really focused. They really want to be not only placed well here, but they want to be consistent, right? They want to prove that they can be consistent as well. Here's a look at our second page. Bucky and Ocus, right? They're holding down that 11th place, but look how close, right? We're starting to get into those finer margins a bit. And this is kind of where we're starting to see things be a lot closer. And that's why we kind of continue to bring up every single one of these points matters so much vivid yeah and for anybody kind of wondering the storyline that kelly was talking about a little bit earlier on paco and mixon right there in 22nd place and eut moving over to oh, na to try no. their luck against our region 22nd place right now not too bad that's pretty good considering how far away they are from the servers. We all know how big of an impact Ping has into play. So to see them being able to go up against these duos, I'm really interested in their strategy, actually. Maybe we can get to watch a game of them, but some other big names that we're seeing, of course, Acorn and Cold currently sitting in fourth place. We had Iamzu and Rise, who was a duo that really impressed us in major one, sitting pretty high up in our leaderboard as well. So some big names breaking through and showing why they are the top of North America. Okay, okay. I mean, another duo that kind of jumps out to me, we talked about them at the beginning of show. It's actually Agers and Booga. Now, we've been yeah. getting like relatively quiet, but I'm getting word they actually just got themselves a victory royale what? here, which has really propelled them up the leaderboard. Again, you just need one really solid game, right? To really jumpstart you and your duo. Because again, we're playing for a couple of weeks. We're playing for the series points. It's about being consistent. How well can we kind of keep this moving to keep finding ourselves up these placements? Yeah, I guess everybody was kind of talking about, you know, oh, why is Buga going to go ahead and select a new teammate? Of course, maybe looking forward to global championships. Maybe not feeling too confident with Aviv as a duo, even though they did well in major number one. So the fact that Buga and Adris might be picking up speed here in qualifier number one, I think that's a good sign. Yeah, it's, it's wild how these duos will dominate online. And then once they're put into an environment that is so stressful, such as a tournament where there's thousands of people watching you live, people cheering and screaming, and that's when they seem to fall. So a lot of these duos that might not be the best when it comes to online tournaments can really shine when it comes to these LAN events. Absolutely, absolutely. And I cannot wait for the Global Championships later on this year. Ooh. But that's enough talk for now because we have more action to behold. So let's jump on board with our casters, MDF and the best taco. That's right. We get to jump in with Man City's Cold and Dignitas Acorn here. The 3X himself already on the move. It seems like we're over at the Grim Gates. We had a team in sight. This is six eliminations right now for Cold and Acorn. But again, the highlight 
of their setting so far is probably this game. We haven't seen them pace this fast, this early. They've definitely been relatively quiet throughout opens leading into this first week of competition, but definitely a strong look for Acorn and Cold. Two Mythics in hand leads me to believe that it's not just the aspect of agility they're controlling, but also that aspect of speed, potentially, if they have that Mythic Hunter's DMR. And I like the little bit of scouting that Acorn is trying to do from the rooftops here at Grimgate. DMR definitely apply pretty big punch especially when you have that four times scope on it. it can be difficult for other players to escape your aim but cold quick with the replay you can see part of the reason why they're able to control Grimgate so efficiently and it's just right in and out of the box both duo did not really seem to anticipate cold to just collapse on him so quickly but Again, six Elims, definitely a strong start for this team carrying into their mid and late game. Yeah, definitely off to the races here, pacing in the right direction. Let's look at Mackwood and Blake's situation here. Mackwood leads the charge here, but we've seen once Blake has gotten to those end games, he has done everything in his power, everything he needs to do to stay alive, clutch up and earn those eliminations, which has been impressive. I love the way Vivid put it earlier. We might just be seeing Blake peaking V2 here in this season, which is definitely very cool to see. He's been around the scene for such a long time. For sure, but with Blake and Mackwood being here at Lavish Lair, every time I see this POI, I always tend to think clicks an epic whale. And I understand the fact that they might not necessarily be in this particular lobby. Keep in mind, this is a rolling lobby format, 250 duo cycling through potentially five lobbies at a time. But it's a POI that can provide a lot. A couple of opportunities potentially for weapon bunkers to spawn and a forecast tower as well. So it could be a contributing factor to the reason why we've seen Clicks and Epic Whale have every single one of their placements on the day be in that top five position, which is part of the reason why we saw them in that third place position on the leaderboard. So a nice amount of series points that they're definitely aiming to build up in week number one. This eight elimination so far, just when we pretty much slid away, they already started picking up another set of eliminations. The replay is going to show you just how it all happened here. And it was a situation that played out to actually end up saving Cold in the process, keeping him alive. This is something we've seen happen in the past here is Cold is usually the type of player who wants to lead the charge. It's really easy to, to get distracted by how flashy a lot of the highlight reels can be for Cold, but Acorn definitely deserves his flowers too. He has done an excellent job alongside Cold, and we've seen Acorn in ample solo clutch scenarios coming out on top. That last circumstance proving to just be another instance where Acorn takes all of his veteranship and a little crispy on the cleanup as well. Eight limbs, definitely something that that duo can feel really good about, and that's why they don't even bother entertaining the team that just threw a little tag Cold's way. They, they don't have to entertain these exchanges because they can just prioritize exclusively on rotations when they have eight eliminations. That's so much surge damage already built up. Yeah, and they have the medallions, right? Like we talked about, to give them that advantage. So positioning is surely going to be in their benefit. I don't know what Twente Infused though, who's on the move right now. Very, very clean rotate here, right through the cut. No resistance, no friction. You get right into a spot here on the edge zone. They know they have options to choose from, and they're going to go ahead and elevate themselves a little bit more here. On the other side, Hove and Diego right now on the move as well. Just at the edge, inside the water. <laughs> Not sure if I like this spot, but it is a spot nonetheless. There's definitely nobody near them which could be a, a pretty big benefit. It does appear as though dead side rotate is their intention, but Diego, right as I mentioned that, spotting out another duo built on a hill directly above them. 
So they will have to be a, a little bit careful traversing forward, although it could also potentially be another opportunity for Diego and Hoff to acquire another two eliminations. Get some more surge going just in case they feel as if three eliminations isn't enough. But materials, relatively easy for them to farm back up. Metal, on the other hand, could be a little bit more hard pressed to come by, but Diego definitely looked relatively healthy in that hard material. Yeah, definitely. And players are dropping pretty fast now. We're already at 48 here. So we're getting closer and closer to zone number eight. Now just outside the lavish layer where the zone's gonna end here. Twix has company rotating nearby. Are they gonna put the pressure down? They are. It's onto Drizzy Bot. Little Rico here. So far, so good. Great tags here for Lumina. He's gonna push right on in. The only confidence starts to surge once he finds his tags. Looked as though Drizzy and Mole Rich were also getting tagged up by a team playing slightly higher up. It seems as though Twix and Leywing caught wind of it as well. As you can see, a little bit of a pause here. They didn't want to fully commit to that box fight engagement, kind of understanding the fact that it's a little bit more exposed than they would like it to be. Definitely tentative with how they're choosing to press forward here. Instead, they're going to continue creating some boxes on that low ground. Meanwhile, Zert and Panic about to layer up over everybody else. They've got to be careful. The way that the zone is continuing to pool, it's only a matter of time before some congestion could potentially look to build inside of that mid-ground area. And Zert and Panic, they, they don't want to be caught in the crossfire because as soon as you draw the attention of the lobby, it, it, it feels as though it's relentless, as if every single team is never going to give up shooting into your boxes. And it's crazy just how fast your hard materials can be expended in those instances. And this is a tough spot for them to be in right here. No forms of mobility that we can see. So the timing is going to be absolutely crucial. Little Flowberry Fizz, so they'll have a little bit to work with here. And they do right across there. Shows you the power of having the Fizz on deck. Makes all the difference here. Meanwhile, Twix slides right on behind Panic. He ends up finding one of them. There goes the full elimination. It's a great, great pickup there for him. But at what cost? The med kits will be expended. Fortunately, still has one in tow. 80 Fizz to work with as well. But the Flowberry Fizz, that secondary pickup, definitely a huge swing there to help them keep propelling their game forward. One more time, looking at Diego and Hov. Looks like they could be caught in a fight here. Recognize the fact that Wiz directly underneath them, but no, instead, Diego gonna take his time. Gonna opt to build up instead. Wants to try and use some height leverage over everybody else on the mid and low ground. Back on with Cold Acorn on the low ground here, doing well. Using the eastern side of the zone here to move out. And the options to pick from all the luxury of time to do it as well. High ground shot shows you that the west side of the zone was completely empty here. Void takes full advantage there with Ralphie to get a clean rotate. Meanwhile, Colton Acorn dashed across, so that might be just it for their underward dashes, but here comes another fight. Trying to push up to 10 eliminations here. Anything is possible, but there's a lot of players alive. Went from not so stacked to extremely stacked here. Over 30 up in the game here. This we're just in zone number nine, so it's gonna start looking extremely congested here. Those players on the low ground as well. It's the fact that Cold was potentially looking for a quick scope opportunity on some of these teams that are looking to try and rotate through these low ground layers. And again, these underworld dashes just saving Cold and Acorn so many of their materials and giving them such effortless rotates in the process, something that Zert wishes he could have. But that's gonna be one more elimination added to the tally count here. Cold and Acorn just shy of 10 eliminations here, sitting on nine. Here he goes, cutting all the way across here. It's allowing him to make it look nice and easy. And of course, it's the medallion giving them all the advantage now. Diego and Hove 
all that slow play ends up playing out well for them as they have control of the high ground here. For now. Very comfortable. Yeah, I was gonna say, very comfortable so far, but you have a team like Acorn and Cole who can dash their way to high ground off the Flowberry Fizz. I mean, anything is possible. And just as we say that, Diego gets absolutely keyed here by Cole. This is where he works his magic best. Absolutely incredible high ground take there. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're not absolutely prepared. And look at that. Diego jumps down. Lewin finds him there in the process. Everything about Acord and Colt's positional status on the low ground was a certain indicator that they were just waiting for a prime opportunity to seize the high ground. It is just so difficult to keep tabs on a team that has that aspect of agility to prevent them from just immediately pouncing on your head like what we just saw Cold and Acorn do. But Eclipse, Magana, doing a decent job here, trying to apply some tags, get a little bit of damage going on to Acorn, but it's gonna be Cold alleviating that pressure, flanking from the backside, diverting the attention now. Eclipse and Ghana, they're not gonna be able to find any further opportunities onto Acorn. Instead, it's gonna be Ghana turned around on by Kaizen, and that will spell the end for his duo as well. Eclipse is cold. Does it one man show just about, but keep in mind, Acorn still making the pop offs at the end there as well. Cold just playing disorienter on the low, and a nice amount of eliminations between the two of them with nine and eight apiece. Yeah, they rocket their way up to a 17 elimination victory royale out of nowhere. That's definitely going to put them back in the conversation. I think they were one of the few teams, too, that were running through a fair amount of games, so they needed a big one to really solidify themselves up towards the upper half of the, the standings here as we start inching our way towards the, the, the overall points in the leaderboards. But take a look here. Once they got the high ground, it was the Cold and Acorn show. They played it very well, very dominant, very confident in their, in their positioning, and they knew right then and here, oh, we got to get points, right? We're not going to allow the lobby to just run this course here. We don't want to do any heal offs. There's no reason to get the points, get in and get out. And just like that, Acorn and Cold find themselves a great victory out here on the platform. So Zeke, catch us up with the numbers here now. We got you for sure, MDF. And uh, I like the again, I don't know what it is about today, but MDF's just like, he's got my internal script up here. Everything I'm like, I'm gonna talk about this. MDF's like, ah, Zeke, I got you. I'm just gonna say before you even said it. Thanks, MDF Classic. Uh, but he, he makes a good point. I wanted to remind everyone at home. So we had like a window to play games here, right? So you either could play a set number of games within that window or as many games as you could within that window, so, right? We kind of talked about a few duos like, hey, they're going to max length games, which means they're not going to get all of the number of games possible within that window. For Akron and Cold, they've already kind of gone through some of their games, so they did really need a really standout game to kind of just make sure we've got these series points on lock and a 17 Elim victory royale. Yeah, that'll be the one, Vivid. Well, the crazy thing about Acorn and Cold, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know, one major one, by the way, right? So they, they are currently the reigning FNCS champions. But as you can see there, three victory royales. Oof. Three. But the cool thing about how they've been playing throughout the day is that if they have made it past the 10 minute mark in the game, right? So they've been going down all spawn or, or early on in the game a lot of the times, but if they have made it past the 10 minute mark of the game, they've actually won it. Every single end game that they have made it to, they have won. They're kind of three for three if they've made it to that point in the game right now. So Acorn and Cold, the end game seemingly is down for them in terms of their strategy. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering if their issue is coming from their landing spot over in Fencing Fields, which is where we saw them land in Major 1 and have great success coming out of it. But we also know that a lot of aggression happens over there. So maybe they just grabbed a good lobby this round and they were able to make it to the end. And like you said, grabbing that victory royale with so many eliminations, 17 to be exact. And I loved their height steal that they went for. It was actually Hov and Diego that had high ground towards the end there. But Acorn and Cold dominating the low ground. Oof. Seemed to get a little bored. And they said, let's go for high ground. And then that's where they just ran away with it. And they're running away with it too in our leaderboard, able to usurp Peterbot and Pollo. <laughs> Good wow. word there, Kelly. Good word. For the first time, it is possible. Gods can bleed. Not only did we see Peter uh, Bot and Poyo get eliminated in that last game, but now they've finally been dethroned as well. 
But now, even watching the, the leaderboard shift right before, and now we've got Skittles and Trashy up here in third place with 250, or 245 points, rather. And even some of these names, right? Seek and Dash, Cam, Aminish. I mean, this is a very fluid leaderboard right now. And with only so much time left, this still could go any which way. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, you know, honestly, we were talking, you know, Oh, there's a bunch of new duos on the NA region, right? This big, this big mix up. How's that kind of going to affect them? Well, in the large scheme of things right now, as it stands, there's only three teams that have multiple victory rounds right now in this round number four. And the cool thing about each one of those teams, Kelly, is that all three teams are actually returning duos, right? So they're experienced. They've played together before in previous majors. So the experience is there, right? Maybe sticking together as a duo is, is proving right now to actually be worth it. I mean, we know how big Synergy has to play in these competitions. I mean, just look at our top two right now. Acorn and Cold and Peterbot and Pollo yeah. sticking together and sticking strong. And I'm excited to see how they're going to do in our next game. That's right. Well, guess what? I've got a surprise for you all. Clicks fans, rise up as we move to this next game. We're actually going to be jumping on board with him and Epic Whale. So, casters, take it away. Let's go, Zeke. It's about time you gave us clicks and epic. We know you control exactly who we watching. He's holding <laughs> out on us, Taco. He's going to start getting so many tweets now just for that. <laughs> Every single time, man. But this is a duo that I I've been really excited about, especially watching their open quals leading in to today's competition. Because clicks and epic, they absolutely love playing for the weapon bunkers. You can see. They were already previously poised in a prime position for it. And judging by the fact that Klix does have that purple sniper in tow, the four times scope on it, have to expect that they had an opportunity to get inside of the bunker because it's the weapon mod benches that can really be such a huge boon for anyone's playstyle, but especially a player like Klix who has been so on point with the Reaper sniper throughout chapter five. What I like about what this duo is doing is they're taking every game extremely seriously, optimizing the amount of placement points. You have some of the fewest games played so far as far as the teams that are inside the top three, and they have some of the highest placement points to, to match it, right? So definitely showcasing that they are pacing themselves very well, really trying to put themselves in the mindset of like, we can do this at finals, right? And oof, as we watch oof. Yamzo and Rise make the rotate, it seems like Yamzo was just clipped with a nasty shot from Grinchy. I don't know if we'll have a highlight of that sniper shot, but it must have been filthy because he got immediately deleted there. And just like that, the tables turn. That's the one thing about snipers being in the meta is that everything gets flipped upside down. It's a sniper beast snipe world out here. That's what it appears like. Poor Rise forced to disengage entirely. Uncertain as to whether or not he'll have an opportunity to get look for Iyamzo's reboot card as well. It's not uncommon for teams to also camp the reboot cards in these kinds of circumstances, especially when it's a prominent player such as Iyamzo getting taken out of the lobby. You don't want to allow Iyamzo and Rise as a duo to compete. Definitely a very troublesome duo to deal with. And Muzz and Paper, all the while, Doing a decent job so far. Don't have any eliminations just yet, but it seems right now as if Muzz and Paper are a little bit more focused on just trying not to get caught between two separate teams. Still impresses me how fast Muzz is when it comes down to the mechanics. He's so there. mechanical. It's insane. Definitely at a different caliber. Cool, and it was. Of course, Clicks and Epic, who was in the bush nearby. There's the team taking shots back and forth there in the exchanges. Epic making sure the coast is all clear here, checking the bushes, making sure the vicinity is good. There's a team down on the beach, so threat lingering there. There's no one behind them, though. Of course, they don't know this, but they're playing it so cautiously here. Yeah, it could be that Clicks and Epic, again, just trying to establish their surge strategy more than anything else. But as you've already touched on earlier today, this duo playing with a, a lot of strong discipline. Have to expect that some of that also 
can be pretty heavily credited to their coach, Blood X. Yeah, even, given even high right breaks there, for a reason. Like, Clicks is setting up with Epic where I have two angles on the team that's going to exit the box. Like, in a right. finals lobby, you need those tags, right? It may not matter in this game at all. They don't need Surge right now. However, they're preparing for finals. So this is a team that you're seeing, you know, take this game very seriously, and you got to appreciate that. Kanata and Cooper, though, with five eliminations, tracking their way through some remnants lying about here at Grim Gate. And again, this is time that they can afford to expend in the storm this early on. But still don't want to be caught out for too long. Definitely want to try and find themselves some strong positioning, maybe catch some other teams off guard with their rotates. Have to expect that they have a, a decent amount of surge already built up off of those five eliminations. But Aviva and Mira, another one of our teams. We haven't necessarily gotten a chance to highlight this duo, but you can always expect big things coming out of these two individuals. Yeah, they've been doing all right. They're inside the top 25. You know, Miro's definitely a player you can never count out. Just never really know when he's going to, uh, you know, win another Grand Finals. <laughs> Straight up with a fresh duo. You just never really know. He is that type of player. Extremely explosive. He's been signed to his own new organization as well. And Aviv, man, Aviv's had his opportunity last season to prove to everyone that he's got what it takes to hang with the best and perform relatively well as far as overall season was concerned. Let's see if he's grown into his own here. I mean, you'd almost expect Aviv, not necessarily a chip on the shoulder, but I, I would probably feel some type of way about getting a third place finish and then still watching my duo choose to split from me. So uh, Aviv, I think, definitely looking for a lot to prove here in major number two. And it definitely starts with solidifying a nice performance in these weeks leading up to the finals lobby. But they're not the only ones looking for their chance to shine. Vaspula and Grinchy also. We saw them with a nice takedown onto Yamzo earlier on. And it seems as though Yamzo is not the only player to have made his fate at the hands of these two. Six eliminations is a pretty impressive stat in comparison to some of the names that we've seen in this lobby already. It's it's looking like a relatively stacked lobby here. Yeah, and Rise just fell to the hands of Kanata too. So talk about big names clashing, big names engaging. That's definitely one of them. Meanwhile, we have Chubbs and Quanti. Obviously, should they make it all the way through to the finals after they fight their way through uppers and or lowers, if they can get to the finals, they will likely be contesting Peter Bonifoyo. So either be free points or the reason Peter Bonifoyo have a bad resulting at the grand finals. We'll see. Chimpanzas so far. Every time we've jumped in with this duo, they have been on fire. Another six eliminations here, continuing to trend down on players. Saw on the feed there though, Aviv not. Something is happening in the distance there. Yup, I see the teams fighting there. Meanwhile, Yamzo falls to Grinchy with the snipe shot from before. Gets the full finish again here. Just comes full circle with Grinchy. And Kanata still looking to try and press forward. Almost some nice tags from Scissor, but Kanata able to hold the wall just long enough. So he looks for a different angle to potentially try and approach from. Kanata also making sure to scout their backside. Wants to make sure that him and Cooper don't get snuck up on. It's going to be a quick dash into a bush not too far away from where their boxes were previously situated. Kanata and Cooper possibly just noticing the fact that uh, they've got prime opportunity here to maybe pick off some teams that are rotating a little bit later in. Sure inspired. Definitely going to be one of those late teams here. The last, if you will, on the backside of this storm right now. They're sitting on a whole duo set of loot right here. So plenty of options to choose from. Mark here is... What's going on with Sure? Oh, no. Might have disconnected. Yeah, unfortunately, I was going to say there's no reason he wouldn't have already been healing here. So unfortunate circumstances for him. As Sprite has to play this one out by himself now, but he's got a lot to work with. Meanwhile, Buzz and Paper continue the dead side rotates. Okay. Respectable. 
taken full advantage of their zone favoritism and their, their outside positioning. And the last time that we saw the duo on screen, neither of them had had an elimination yet, so the fact that they seemingly were able to find a duo to pick apart, got to be a nice boost here for these two. A nice little refresh as well. Definitely looking relatively set as far as their materials are concerned. Ample amounts of fizz to work with also. Decent weaponry loadout too. And you can see though, so many teams stacked in front of where Muzz and Paper are situated at. It's gonna be a tough trying to break away from all that congestion building on this west side of the zone. And fortunately for a lot of these teams, zone pulls directly next to them. So players are probably gonna get very active as soon as these rotates actually start happening. Yeah, but this is gonna go up and over, so players are gonna have to start playing for some elevation here shortly. You can see some indestructible structures just nearby. Positioning is gonna mean everything right now. Put some crew down low. That's gonna play out. Ooh, okay, so they're baiting all the loot right there in the back. They're greeting for it, okay. Is that worth it? That's what I wanna know. Tags are coming in now. Much worse position than they were in before. But they just have so much materials to work with. It doesn't really seem as though it's impacted their game in the slightest. If anything, Clicks gonna pop those two small shield potions. Shield potion now can carry Flaberry Fizz and Clicks and Epic. Maybe we're anticipating a, a little bit more reward for that I think, exchange. I think they saw the mythic banana and they thought it was a medallion and, and that was probably why they, they felt so hard pressed to push over if I had to guess right because they had plenty of material they had those at, at least there, there was a full commitment right to that progression they, they didn't hesitate hesitation can often lead to finding yourself fully eliminated and again it's still a little bit of materials that they were able to pick up so didn't really lose anything for it fortunately for them Paper oh. having found yet another elimination, though, and you can see it right there. Quick stat in case you missed it earlier on. Happy birthday to Muzz. Happy birthday, Muzz. The 3X in the flesh here. I love it. A little stat coming out for him. Someone should clip it and send it to him. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. The best birthday present, though, would be for uh, the lobby to just let him win. Guys, anybody? Cooper? I, don't, I don't know about that one. Uh, Cooper <laughs> seems pretty determined to hold the high ground right now. They single out the next zone here. He's clearing the way Ooh. for us. Someone pushes up. What just happened there? Tags coming from down low. For a second, I thought they were being fully contested, but it's not going to be the case here. This immediately builds up as well. Cone's going to provide some nice coverage. Paper, Muzz. One more elimination added to the tally. Make that two as Muzz found one as well. Four in total here as Paper just aggressively tarping forward through the secondary height. Trying to close the gap, I believe, and work his way directly underneath Cooper and Kanata to possibly look to challenge for height later on. If anything, it'll force Cooper and Kanata to possibly over peak. Same mentality here for Clicks and Epic Whale. So they're gonna take their time, and now it's the height challenge that they're after. Oh, Cooper and Kanata don't even realize it's coming. The shots come in. It was a great tag by Clicks, and look how fast he is. Taking control of the wall, forcing out Kanata and Cooper. Full on pressure to waste no time to start targeting all the players in the mid ground layers. It's exactly what you need to do when you're playing for high ground like this. Just assert your position immediately. There it is, shots from up above. This time it's Skittles, but still. It has begun now for Clicks and Epic Whale to possibly pick up a second victory out here. But again, Cooper, massive blow. That tackle down from height. And Kanata getting picked off in the process here. It's Cooper trying to get the solo performance that he needs for those additional placement points. But he doesn't have any heals left. Running so low on builds as well. He needs a refresh and he needs it now. Both 
only about half of his HP to work with. It's going to be tough to come by as Paper Muzz seemingly taking over on the low ground. Right as I say that. Massive shot, though. Oh, he's still going. Still going. Find the tag, but no, Paper's going to get treated out. Muzz, can you hit the shot that matters? He does get finished off there. It's still well within the top 10, so great placement points. Meanwhile, Clicks and Epic have all the runway in the world to work with here, but this high ground is coming straight off the edge of this cliff, so this is going to elevate the distance from height, making it a little more dangerous to hold that position here. We'll see. Meanwhile, Chubbs versus Plague down low. Ooh, how did he turn that one around? I don't know, but he gets the points in the process there. Meanwhile, Hazentz and Bajia Jr. trying to work their way for a 10 elimination game potentially here. This is a great, great game for them. Racking up big points here. Seeking Dash R as well. And again, Dash gonna watch as Seek gets eliminated right in front of his eyes. Now playing way outside of zone. Just looking for the med kit on placements. Clicks and Epic on the other hand. Still in full control of height. Just spraying down the teams on the low ground. Probably only a matter of time, and sure enough, Click's gonna drop, gonna look to try and play Disruptor. Epic Well right next to him. These two were just playing side by side. And it doesn't appear as though their streak will be broken. This is looking like their lobby to win. Click's looking for the final player. Ooh. And sure enough, he finds it. A nice Victor Royale, keeping their top five performances of the day, holding strong. You just love it when it ends on a nice, clean tag like there. <laughs> Hunting someone down, breaks the wall, doesn't miss a single beat and hits the shot. And clicks an epic whale, get there. What's that? Is that really their second victory out already? We've seen, just when you look at the, the leaderboards, the placement points that this team has managed to manage to maintain throughout the couple hours that we've been covering all these games. And now we jump in with them and watch them win a game so effortlessly, it almost seemed like. But you could tell it was about executing at the end. They did take that high ground. Well played for Clicks and Epic Whale here. So send on over to Zeke, Vivid, and Kelly to break it all down. There you have it. A victory royale from the duo. You love to see it. You can tell just how much practice they've really been putting in leading into major number two. And it shows. I cannot believe. And I like, like they said, two victory royales. These guys are looking real good right now. Another duo that is returning, of course, getting multiple victory royales on the region. And, you know, this is typical of Clicks and Epic, where what we saw all last major in those FNCS finals was the constant attempts to go for high ground, the constant attempts to hold it. Being successful this game, of course, taking it a little early and still being able to actually find the opportunities to go get those refreshes, right? That's kind of what they were searching for in finals last major was, hey, listen, you know, we want to go up the height so that way we can actually find refreshes. In this game right here, they were able to net that refresh, drop down, get a couple of eliminations, find the mat so that way they can stay up on height and the game cleanly right there, Kelly, with a win. I mean, just as you were saying, in Major 1, we saw them go for height time and time again, but a little bit early for our liking. Here, they went around Zone 10, and that seemed to be the sweet spot for them, taking down Cooper and Kanata, stealing that height away from them. And then from there, it was just easy pickings. They had great heals on Whale, whereas Clix was able to jump down, grab as many as eliminations as he can. And although it was five, the placement is what we're looking at here. And although they did break their top five placement, they did get 12th place last game. Their average placement out of the five games that they have played is fourth. It Oof. is absolutely phenomenal to see this duo doing so well. And then we put this in the context of like grand finals, a victory out in grand finals with five elims. That's good, right? So like these guys are practicing four grand finals. They're looking ahead and thinking, we want to make it as far as we can be, as consistent as we can be, because that's what we have eyes on. And now look at this. They have taken over that number one spot. And just behind them as well, look at Acorn and Cold, right? Tied with Seek and Dash. And these guys are just trading places all because of these tiebreakers. They are forcing Peter Bot and Poyo, who had an amazing start back, right? Finally, there's just some control in the lobby to just say, okay, Peter Bot and Poyo, you guys have had your fun. Now calm down. 
Yeah, and that's kind of like stylistic, I, I would say, right? A stylistic difference right now. I mean, we've talked about it before. Peterbot and Puyo are very clearly going for like high elimination games, constantly keying everybody. But then when you look at Clicks and Epic Well, you know, it's so cool to see them actually kind of practice exactly how they would be playing if this was FNCS Finals, right? Going for those low elimination games, not trying to rack all them up and have like an unrealistic amount of mats slash refreshes because they really do want as much practice as they can get. So. For me personally, I would I would like to see clicks and Epic Well style implemented just a little bit more out of Peter Bot and Poyo, right? Kind of just win as many games as you possibly can. But like we already said, Kelly, they're looking for records, not wins. Yeah, definitely. And I love that you're talking about style because the style of a new duo that I'm really interested in is Kanata and Cooper. I mean, we've seen Kanata's ability to understand what is going on in the early game, use his unique rotations to kind of to his advantage. And now we're seeing that here as well in Major 2, joined by Cooper here. They did a good job holding out high ground. You can see that they had everything set up for them. Okay, Matt's obviously an incredible loadout and tons of damage so that they didn't have to worry about Storm Surge. But of course, when you have someone like like clicks an epic whale try to steal hype from you well that's when you have to go into a solo situation like what cooper happened here Kanata not able to hold out but cooper still doing a pretty good job holding strong to make sure that he made it into at least the top 11. yeah i like the refining factor we talked about them kind of at the beginning right and this being not only the one single duo that swapped up because we've seen many duos change things up, but this is, remember, just week number one. We're still trying to figure things out, right? We've had cash cups to kind of figure out the initial play style, but now that we're in major two, it's like, okay, what does this actually look like? Where are the areas we need to kind of improve on? And even in just the games we've seen, these guys have really stepped things up. We only have right around 20-ish minutes before the final queue closes here. We had 10 games to play within three hours. So we're either going to get all 10 done or hope to play as many of them as possible out with just a handful of time left. How are you guys finding the game so far? Yeah, finding them pretty good. You know, speaking on like last chapter and how this one kind of, or not last chapter, last season, and how this one kind of compares to it, right? We're seeing pretty typical stuff as well. You know, some teams, some duos, when they go down to solos, they're trying to go for those like early heal loss, right? Trying to maximize the amount of placements that they're getting. Of course, high ground is pretty dominant again this season. Usually though, it's going to the team that does have the medallion out of Grimgate, right? That aspect of agility. But as we saw right there, it's not necessarily impossible for a team without it to take home a dub. So uh, yeah, very, very typical, I think, Kelly, like heal offs and then medallions proving to be very, very strong. Yeah, and, and we've seen a little bit of variety as well, though it does seem to typically go down to the heal off. We've seen teams on the low ground win, teams on the high ground win, and then of course the heal off meta that everyone's such a big fan of. And I love to see that variety. Obviously, this meta is going to evolve and pan itself out once we do get to the grand finals, but it kind of seems like everyone's just playing standard Fortnite right now. Yeah, what kind of began is a little bit chaotic, right? The the Peter Bot Pollo situation is now a lot more controlled, right? This is kind of the the, the Fortnite we're used to seeing, really uh, thoughtful, methodical play from the players, trying to control as much of that chaos or RNG from game to game as possible. Man, I, I'm I guess excited, right? With all of these duos kind of really showing up. I'm almost excited to see where they will grow, right? How they will continue to evolve, even just going into next week. Yeah. Yeah, even like that week off, right? We could see a lot of changes kind of happen, not only like in how people are playing, maybe some people will be very, very confident in how they did in week number one and kind of like lay back a little bit and kind of relax. And then some people, of course, will be, oh, it'll be crunch time, right? Maybe you don't have enough points to make it into the upper bracket or semis in general. And we'll see, we'll see some teams trying extremely hard, probably switching it up as well. And talking about switching it up, what if you switch regions and we're going to be taking a look at Paco and Mixon? So excited to see how this duo is going to be doing. I cannot wait. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close to getting right back into all of the action. So with a couple games left here, let's say we just have like two games we have available to us with 20 minutes. Do we just look for the full, like, let's just try and get like a top five? Or do you think maybe we just go in, we try and get eliminations, see how far we can make it for eliminated. Let's just jump back in really quickly before that queue closes. Like, what do you think is uh, better, worse? What do you think? Yeah, usually one of these last games or some of these last games definitely die off very, very quickly, right? A lot of people going for eliminations and then trying to like back out or go down early, just getting a couple points. So that way they can get into that last game. But you never know if you can get into that last game. So I don't think these players are going to try and drop early. I definitely think they're going to go for the W key, but also be a little safe. Yeah, might as well play it out, right? Might as well. Well, with that, I'm getting word. It is, in fact, time to go in on the duel that Kelly mentioned. So let's just jump right back into all the action.
Wait a second. I thought FNCS has some region lock things in place. <laughs> Back on Mixon are truly committed this season, it seems like. Two playing on NA from EU. Well, it's actually interesting because Paco and Mixon actually moved to Dallas for this season to compete. So they are actually participants on zero ping for this major. And one of the main things that we saw boasting, at least from Mixon's side of view, on socials, caught win that first day of opens. This team was actually in first place, but after that, it just seemed like things crumbled. I mean, granted, they still find themselves competing here in week number one. So uh, making the auto opens to be one of the 250 teams competing here today is, is definitely a, a strong feat for your first season on NA. And again, when you think about the commitment, the fact that they opted to move to Dallas to participate in the NA major two, I, I just think that that alone, you, you've got to have a lot of confidence as a team to want to take your chances in a different region. And it's it's one way to, you know, make make a great headline, make a statement too if you can, you know, compete with the best the best cross regional. I mean, that that is, you know, one of the, one of the greatest accolades you can ever accomplish as a professional player. I mean, this it's it's one of the main reasons we always talk about Muzz, right? Like look at Muzz constantly being celebrated just well, not only did he, of course, win multiple efforts, yeses, but he decided to stick around for the NA region for the better uh, levels of competition. Also think about players like King and Phaser, for example, making the move from Brazil over to Europe. But again, drawing the attention back to the focal point of NA's week one here in Major 2. And the way that these lobbies have just seen so many players cycling through them, Duke and Noxie, another one of our newly formed duos that have certainly had a pretty big impact in this lobby so far. Four eliminations so far. And now here, challenging Rift Island. You can tell they want to get aggressive. But at the same time, Duke, the fact that he's opting to take the Ascender down, full on chasing out Akichi, does not want to let this possible fifth elimination escape. He's getting right into the box. 18 HP and... At this point, I mean, you're fully committed, but he misses. He tries to whip his way through the wall there, but it's not going to be enough. Unfortunately, fully eliminated there to the hands of Cookie and Evan. And I mean, I'm sure they're they're probably celebrating. They're pretty happy about that one because they were getting hard keyed right there. And that's a that's a frustrating situation to be in, right? When you're getting pushed, and you're probably wondering yourself, like, yo, what do we do to you? Like, what what is going on right now? I think that was also the first circumstance that we've seen today uh, of a player trying to utilize the, the chains of Hades. I mean, in the past, we've seen a creator such as Resub pointing out uh, some of the efficient ways that you can utilize the chains of Hades, but it's always been a little bit more of a, of a prank in a sense. Dude must have really thought he was going to get the better end there, just like the Roller and Crackly. They spotted out Rise as a solo, so you already know that the pressure is just not going to come to a stop anytime soon here. Crackly actually just tackling the same aggressive pacing here onto Rise. It, it feels like it's only a matter of time before he gets eliminated. Yeah, Rise, unfortunately, bit off more than he can chew here. Crackly and D-Roller, two very experienced players, jump their way up to four eliminations. There is a duo just to the east, though. You have to be a little careful. It's the team positions north side of them now. Yeah, talking about, you know, unique <laughs> weapons showing up today. I guess we've seen the Avatar Mythic Water Bending come out. And now, of course, the Chains of Hades. So very interesting how most players have decided, hey, let's just play a little vanilla, right? Keep it simple. Oh, we know where this is headed. Oh. Mixon's got the sniper out. The Caught a player, <laughs> Zircon. What ping? Think what ping? next on the next one. Yeah, that's what Zero Ping does after all, but uh, Mixon, uh, just absolutely devious work there. Caught the glint from Zircon's weapon and threw back one of his own, except his was actually a headshot. You gotta be quicker with the lineups if you're gonna go into that scope position and Ooh. mix in with a crack. We're talking about bullet drop off Keep and up. how the sniper was supposedly nerfed, but not with the way that Mixon is working it this round. And that's definitely some really strong surge 
that he's already managed to build up here in this lobby. Yeah, we were spot on, by the way, about this game. Really, really starting to thin out pretty quickly. Look, yes. 43 <laughs> players alive. Now, Paco and Mixon are taking what seems to be a very serious approach to this, though. They're, they're playing dead side rotate right now. They recognize that, hey, we can win a game here and get a couple eliminations in the process. So you can see they are definitely taking their time right now. I feel like I can appreciate this kind of pacing because it does also kind of remind me of the clicks and epic will you know approach where hey let's take every game fully serious and and you know take this opportunity at fncs that we have very very much serious also when you consider when we're trying to represent eu over in the sides of na yep. the constant regional battle you've got to make sure that you're coming out strong here or at least finishing strong on the day that's exactly I mean, what they, they came to NA because, you know, this is the better <laughs> region. They had to, right? They didn't want to get it. <laughs> no, no <laughs> comment. I will not be looped into this. Not today, MDF. <laughs> Just baiting you. Uh, <laughs> you gotta remember, though, I technically started off with EU, so... Uh, my, my allegiance knows no bounds at this point. I just respect the gameplay from everyone at this point. Both regions boasting strong duos of their own accord. And Reciprocal G Monster, they really want this elimination onto Pax. Reciprocal has been bearing down on the wall time and time again. Curious what Pax's materials count is at, but won't have to worry much longer as he will finally get knocked down. Rappy as well. Just a little bit of HP to work with, and sure enough, that's gonna be another confirmed elimination here for Reciprocal and G Monster. Six to start this one off with. Not bad, not bad here. It's gonna jump them up to 150 points. They definitely uh, need the points here. Otherwise, they're gonna be middling in the pack, setting themselves up for the series points here. Convicted and Scolds back with them. Just for a little bit. One of the few teams outside of the safety of this new zone right now. This is just emoting in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that from Skulls. You know, gotta, gotta keep it loose, gotta keep it fun. Just live his best life. Exactly. Vibes clearly high for this duo right now. He's convicted. Looking to keep it going as well. If he's able to connect with a headshot or even just a, a decent body tag, it's a, it's a good amount of surge. But Surge isn't really something that I think that this lobby is going to have to worry about when, again, you consider how quickly it's been thinning out. Quick hop and a skip, and they're right in safe zone. We are on out. It'll start to simulate more like a stack end game. So you have about 40 players that are going to be hitting these hard moving zones here. Everyone's going to be setting up for that big decision here coming shortly. Meanwhile, Vanilla's Convict. Oof. This zone's going to go really far. You can see most players are already on the move. G-Monster, Reciprocal want nothing to do with it. They're out. They've already gotten the, the eliminations they were initially after. And Vanilla's and Convict, part of the reason why they were looking at third party is because even though they've got a decent amount of materials, what they don't have much of is a good supply of heals, at least not from what Vanilla's is rocking so far with their loadout. Only two bananas and three small shield potions. But a nice tag for Laundry's DMR. Could be an opportunity now. You can see Vanilla's instantly pan their route right towards Crackly. And you get a good butt shot like that. And now they've caught up to Reciprocal and G-Monster are in the process. Whether intentional or not, they've got to worry about Mixon and Paco across the way, who's steadily applying pressure into the box by taking place underneath Vanilla's and Convict. DMR does a lot of damage as well if you get clipped by it. Are they pushing in? Oh yeah, they still have a ways to go to the new zone there. Mixon and Pack be the first ones to touch down. Vanilla's and Convict want to maintain the high ground here. They're going to start building off this little low ground. See right on top of them is Shark and EXE. Mixon and Paco distance themselves from the rest of the competition. It's just we'll a big advantage, yeah. though, for, for Mixon and Paco. They were, they were the first ones, so and now they can just look back, choose to spray down the teams that they saw trying to circulate in from behind them. But no, in fact, they're going to continue to keep positioning as the focal point here. 
move a little bit closer, try to establish some height. It's not a bad spot to be in, but they definitely want to keep in mind some of those other duos trailing behind them. And again, Mixon already taking note of the team that's truly established ultimate high ground. Yeah, it's TK. I think he's built a huge metal one by one all the way about six or seven layers high here. But it's not going to be safe necessarily. He will have to build off of that. Yeah, there it is. Bacon and TK up top. See all the metal they put into the structure. This is a very, very solid base that they have right here. Solid foundation and more metal to continue to invest in here. Oh, TK missing plenty of tags. That should have been a free elimination for him. Uncharacteristic of him to miss this many tags. What? Definitely looks like he's trying to make up for it. That's gotta be the worst feeling when you're spraying and it's just a cone after cone after cone. And you just don't get through it. GG. <laughs> Let's get back with Mixon though. Okay, he's gonna, gonna eat the banana here to go ahead and give him all the HP that he needs. And they go straight for high ground. Look at this. Quick and easy now. The Flowberry Fizz, the extra HP. And now they have high ground with. Close to 400 metal and mixes inventory. Reciprocal glances up, sees what's happening. Full boxes here down low. Somehow lost G-Money in the process. There it is. Back to back now. A lot of really low material counts though. For a good amount of these players we've been spectating so far. Reciprocal, he literally has zero builds to his name. It's gonna be forced to finding a refresh and he needs it stat. Just breaking through these pre-existing boxes, breaking down these walls, hoping to try and catch somebody off guard, but instead it's gonna be G-Monster. It's taken down first. Convicted though, pays the price here. And a little bit of materials now to work with for Reciprocal as he's gonna pick up the mats that G-Money will opt to drop. And again, Reciprocal trying to do what he can, working through the low ground layers. As a solo, though, he's just trying to see if he can catch anybody else off guard. He's got to be careful, but he opens up the wall anyways. He wants to take the fight. Excellent job there. Onto Qua said, can he get the finish with the point? Shots are coming everywhere. 7 HP goes for the heal instead. I don't know if I like that play. There it is. He recognizes danger. No builds either. Pickle catches him out and unfortunately could not get the Elim in the process. But Poppy Blast is on fire right now as well. He's on four Elims. He's got EXC damaged and pushed into the storm line. High ground free to rain tags from up above, but everyone else now thrown in the blender in the mix here. Just seven duos up, so there's a lot of solos too here. Kind of in this combo. Well, this is lining up to be potential win here for Paco and Mixon. Be an excellent way to finish week number one. Establish themselves some good placements to work their way up the leaderboard. Potentially secure a little bit more series points as well. But Poppy Blast, he seems to kind of just be on a layer all his own. Everybody else either playing ultimate low or just up on the high ground there for Mixon and Paco. Banana gonna buy a little bit of time here for Poppy Blast and it's gonna take use of the mobility just managing to squeeze going. out another elimination off the Thorfinn. And yeah, Poppy Blast has just been on fire, but will finally get shut down here. And sure enough, it's going to be Mixon and Paco striking for their victory royale in the day. Well played, too, as we get right to the final minutes, pretty much, of the queue. Will they have time to queue again? We don't know, but three eliminations, big victory royale. We know that's worth tons of placement points. So either way, getting a win on the North American region, regardless of the, the stage, right? The qualifier is still a good feeling and a confidence boost. So take a look at how they do it. Dixon and Paco swing around and the last elimination there goes right into their favor. That's gonna surely jump them up a little bit, Taco. Have to expect this much, but I'm more curious about what the analysts are gonna let us know as far as how the day is shaped up. 
That's right, Paco, Mixon get themselves the Victory Royale. And though it's only with three Elims, it is still a Victory Royale. That is still a ton of placement points. Remember, we're playing for series points over the next few weeks, right? So all of these points, they will absolutely make a difference. But for the duo, finding themselves again this at this moment in time, that Victory Royale, it's going to help, right? It's going to make a difference, especially as like, you start to energize. If they have one time for one more game, they can jump in as quickly as possible. We actually ourselves have one more game. But again, congratulations to the duo. Yeah, shout out to Paco and Mixon, right? There's actually a lot that kind of goes into what they are actually doing this major. I mean, moving to a whole different country to play on a different region. I mean, not only is that uncomfortable and incentive, right? You're not used to kind of playing on your own setup. You're gonna have to, have to adapt to a whole new setup, but they kind of have to adapt to a whole new region, right? Like, like kind of how NA plays, what, what can kind of be their strategy? And honestly, if we take a look at their, their round one, right? Where they actually came out and won and everybody, you know, was kind of hitting socials and talking about, oh, they had so low elims, but they still ended up winning them. Like, why aren't you guys going for more elims? And honestly, it just seems like they're a placement heavy team, right? They like to play for the end games. And as we just saw in that game right there, even though there's a big difference between round one and round four, they're still kind of, you know, leaning towards that play style, playing for placement and getting low eliminations, which in some regards is really, really impressive because that just means, Kelly, they're not really finding many refreshes. They're making the most out of the mats that they actually farm throughout the game where they don't even really need them. Yeah, they're very efficient as a duo. And I think that that's kind of the word that exemplifies what is setting them apart from the rest of the competition. A lot of these duos we see just kind of run and gun and they hope to get elimination and sometimes they put themselves in a bad situation. But I think Mixon and Paco are really good observing what's going on around them, having a good game sense and making sure that they have the advantage regardless of where they are in the game. Speaking of game sense, uh, Reciprocal in that last game as a oh solo gosh. rider, what in the world? <laughs> Reciprocal just on something else entirely, man. In these situations where you're kind of left alone, it's the pressure's on, right? And for him to just maintain composure and just get back to back, Elims, impressive stuff. Yeah, huge stuff. I mean, we've seen it time and time again where clutch moments like this kind of make or break some runs in an FNCS and Reciprocal not only doing this, right? helps them on the leaderboard as it currently stands, but it's like a huge confidence booster, right? Like you kind of have like these moments out there of yourself performing so well. It can really, really help when you're competing at such a high level. So incredible clutch coming out of reciprocal right there. And Kelly, listen, look at the leaderboard oh, right now. Um, Paco and Mixon switching regions and already in the top. 10, you know the EU boys are, uh, are going ham right now, but Acorn and Cold are reigning champs from Major 1. Still away first place from Clicks and Epic Whale, but they're still hot on their heels. Look at the VRs that we have in our top 10 right now. And you know, I love to see it. We kind of have some old pros and then we got some new names as well here. Yeah, this, this top 10 is not what I would have anticipated. You know, I really did believe that Peter Bottom Poil were just gonna run away with it. But to see Acorn and Cold, your winners from Major 1, to come back and have a little bit of a slower start to the day, and then be in this situation where they're the ones in ahead, they're the front runners now, it's hard to kind of like take focus away from them, right? And even when you look at someone like Clicks and Epic Well, remember, for them, they've been making these longer placing games, right? They've had these longer form games where they've made it into these top fives very consistently. There's just a lot of talent, basically, is what I'm trying to say, spread out over NA this week. Oh yeah, 100%. And we're gonna see that kind of develop throughout, but it's just really, really cool to see how, you know, or how this is actually gonna play out, right? Cause this leaderboard, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see who's actually made it into one final game. Who's gonna be able to make a statement in qualifier one round for right now, right? Who should we be looking kind of like win this FNCS? I mean, we've got some obvious ones in the back of our minds, but anybody that can kind of change that sentiment would be awesome. And I think there might be some people saying in the third page, oh, Agers and Booga, they're all the way down in 25th place. But you have to That'd remember, these aren't set lobbies. There's 250 <laughs> duos competing right now. And just making it into this part of the competition, making it into round four, is going to give you those series points that you need. And all these duos are going to try and get into the top 50 series points over this week and next week because they want to make it through the upper bracket of the semifinals. So although they might not be performing to 
the expectations of our viewers, I do think that they're still going absolutely crazy and playing just the way that they need to be. Yeah. yeah, that's such a great way to frame it, right? This is not grand finals, right? This is week one of major number two. There's still time to make adjustments. There's still time to kind of have these crazy pop-off performances, Vivid. Right now, this is this is just the competition starting. Gosh, it's so much. Like, there's so many storylines going on. Like we saw, you know, Aviv and Mira right there, 23rd place as well. Shout out to them. But I also saw Ken Beans and Al in 27th place, one that I want to kind of give a shout out to. I'm pretty sure they both moved to uh to be a little bit closer to the servers there get a little bit lower ping right so they're looking to take over the fncs as well and being top 30 that's pretty huge it's pretty good it's pretty good seek I'm, I'm ready for this next game i know that we're making sure that the lobby's ready and we finally have a whole set game to get into all these players like you were asking in the previous mid game are they going to be going w key or are they just going to try and survive i think this is now when you have to go for the eliminations yeah, remember, with as long as you get into that game, right, and the queue closes, you've got the length of that game. You don't have to just run crazy and just get eliminations and just when you're done, you're done, right? You you want to try and go crazy, but we want to go for that victory, Alice, if possible. We're looking for points, and at this point, we hit a really hard break, and we go, okay, now this is the last game on the day. We need to be really careful. We need to treat this like a grand finals lobby. If there's a time to do it, Viv, it's now. It's this game. Yeah, I think this game will probably be one of the most stacked we've seen throughout the day. Even like game number one that we kind of watched, right? I saw that one, the, the player counts were getting a little bit lower than I anticipated faster than I had thought, right? But like you mentioned, Deke, this is the last game that we're gonna be playing. So anybody that's trying to bump themselves up on the leaderboard, there's no point in kind of, you know, W keying or, or going down early, right? Play the game out because ultimately placement, getting eliminations in the end game, Kelly, that's where the points are at. I know that's where the points are at, but I want to see some double oh, kill. Gosh. I want to see <laughs> Peter Bai and Poyo come out again and bring a 30. I know it's not going to happen, but it's what I want, and I'm putting it out there in the universe. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm here for it. Look, if Peter Bai and Poyo, they somehow have an additional game, and we get to see that right here. Look, let's just put them in the lobby. Let's put <laughs> Clicks and Epic Whale in a lobby. Let's just go crazy, right? This is just week one. Let's just, this is just now the finals. That's where we're just changing. I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, with this last game to go, I feel like a lot of these players, remember, because they've either had 10 games or three hours to play, again, Clicks and Epic Whale, they've had longer games, so they have more ready to go. Whereas Peter Bottom Poyo, they've had quicker games for sure. So maybe they have less at their disposal, right? So I'm curious to see what this final game will look like Viv. will it will it be crazy will it be a w key i don't yeah. know man Oof, i don't know who's even gonna be in the game right that's the biggest <laughs> question of all i don't know it's, it could be crazy who's gonna survive all spawn who's gonna land where it's all up in the air i think i know who we're gonna go see but i don't want to spoil it zeke i'll let you do that okay okay all right <laughs> it's a good one okay all right last game of the day watch you guys to spoil it before we kick things off who is it kelly tell me Oh, everyone, you know who you want to see. It's Peterbot and Poyo. Can they pull out another 20-plus elimination game? Well, let's find out. It's time. Send it on in. See, I knew Zeke controlled the lobbies, I'm telling you. <laughs> we get right into the action. He's always here to give us the fan service. First, it was clicks. Now it's Peterbot and Poyo for the last game. They've been called yet again, but but only 20. That 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 feels like rookie numbers for these two monster. I, I'm expecting nothing shy of whatever they need to actually acquire 100 eliminations on the day because they're well, not too far from it. It'd be more impressive if they can actually get 20 eliminations. This is the least amount of elims we've seen <laughs> them at any point in the day. They actually have zero right now. Do you think the pressure's on? Do you think they saw? The, uh, the, the Alden stat online where it shows that they might be on track to break a record here. I don't know. Hey, no distractions after all, right? But definitely something that can subconsciously play a part. Peter Bott and Poyo, definitely a team that likes to keep tabs of where exactly they stand as Skittles trashy. They could potentially be the first two eliminations for Peter Bot and Poyo, or they could potentially end Peter Bot and Poyo's run altogether. As Peter Bot Poyo a little bit pressed further away from where we would have expected them to be at this point. And it seems as though they really want to take this challenge 
at Rift Island. But again, if they want to get those 20 E limbs or even one, first it's going to start with Polio not getting dropped and Skittles instantly trying to see if he can dive into Polio's box. Trashy though with the problem all his own. This could be an exchange of duo teammates at this rate. Yeah, big 100 tag from Peter Bot here onto Trash. He's definitely going to give him the advantage he was looking for. The hand cannon miss on the follow-up, though. Here's the real question. Does he jump up to support his teammate or stay down low? He's going to opt to pull the ladder here. There it is. Now swings back around. Back up to Polio. Needs a bit more material, so... Plenty of opportunity here to bounce back now, but Trashy keeping up the pressure here. Alongside Skittles. We already talked about it. This is a team that is very much exceptional. However, when in the cross here of Peter Bot, can you survive? It would be pretty insane though for Skittles and Trashy to just completely cut off Peter Bot and Pollo in this final lobby, but just Going. Like that, Skittles forced to retreat. Really nice connection there from the hand cannon out of Peterbot onto his noggin. And Trashy doesn't want to abandon his teammate by any means. They're still looking to play side by side here. Peterbot, though, going to keep the pressure moving forward. And at this rate, Peterbot, zero builds left. Has to really consider how badly he wants this aggressive instance. Poyo's going to drop him. Handful of wood, but MDF, th this exchange has gone on for so long, and there's no way that either of these teams could come out better for it. Yeah, Peter Boss is messing around at this point. They know it's the last game, they know they're up at the top, and look, we're gonna double back to the Rift Island here for the material. Of course, is gonna set them up to continue to fight if they wanted to. Meanwhile, more action happening around. This is a jam packed. Last lobby, y'all. We have Clicks and Epic Whale in this game as well. And man, the sniper in Clicks' hand is just devastating. You can see the body tag. You know, Clicks trolled all of us. He said online that he was retiring the sniper due to the new <laughs> bullet drop. But you can see he just can't resist it. He's too good. He's trying to give the, the lobby a false sense of security. That's what it sounds like. Because. She's convincing others, you know, he's trying to manipulate the, the No one would presence. ever believe him, though. <laughs> just every single one of his streams, if it's not in his loadout, the Reaper Sniper, it just means that he hasn't found one yet. He absolutely loves the sniper rifle, and he does such an excellent job utilizing it to its fullest potential. Three eliminations this game so far for Clicks and Epic Whale, so they're set up pretty well. There's Kanata and Cooper. What a lobby. We got, we got ourselves a little stacker here. And honestly, games. 63 players alive right now is also impressive considering how fast paced all the games have been today. And even with two eliminations, for a moment, Cooper and Kanata were underneath that damage threshold. But sometimes eliminations can be a blessing in disguise. Part gets taken out, and next thing you know, Cooper and Kanata, they're practically 500 above the damage threshold now. And they've got a, a nice overview of the lobby towards the north side of Grand Glacier. But these mountains can just provide such a great overview in terms of scouting out which direction other teams might be approaching from, as well as just ensuring that it, it'll be difficult for other teams to try and scale these mountain faces with a team like Cooper and Kanata kind of holding it down. A lot of teams on this... Outskirts edge right here. Bakken and Pars being one of the few having gotten to touch base with them yet today, considering all the lobbies have been rolling through. But 256 points, they're definitely on track for a top 10. If they can break into that 300 point threshold. So this is it. This is a big chance for them to secure tons of series points here, virtually qualifying their way through to one of the seats in the brackets. Still, they'll definitely want to try and build a, a couple of elimination points as well in this final lobby, at least as many as they can try to. And with only four points so far off of the two eliminations that they've acquired, you can tell that they're not satisfied just yet, but they're also not that pressed 
for an early rotate just yet. Again, that elevation provided by the, the natural landscape there on the north side of Grand Glacier just makes it really easy to, to try and pinpoint some rotating duos. It's a duo that's definitely in the zone right now. I like this play. I like that although they're safe, Kaiser is considering moving just a little bit further in to get away from the congested amount of players that will start to settle in on this outer edge. Meanwhile, Mars is more than solo right now. A couple bandages in his inventory. He's decided he might have to play zone out. Teams that were camping on top of him have also backed out too. And I'm gonna go some extra heals for the road now. Just a scavenger at this point. Living off of the kitchen supplies. Oh my gosh, they're still fighting. Peterbot and Boyer okay. look zero eliminations. They actually had a chance to break the record. It seems like the pressure that should have been surmountable for this team is now coming up short. Oh, but Peterbot with a monstrous tag here. What did this player have? Not much to work with, but some bandages. But the zone's doing way too much damage, so he's gonna have to give it up. Who has the medallion though? Oh, was it left behind? Potentially. Oh no, the edit comes in. It's all gonna come down to one tag. Can he hit it? It's not his ramp. He tries to double edit it out, but he's coned in as well. Peterbot is so quick though. I don't know how he got out of there, but Batman Booga somehow got the cards reversed onto him. And this is one I thing <laughs> professional players can do very well is fight with no HP. I, I don't know how they managed to make it happen, but definitely can. The way that Peterbot was able to hold down those stairs and walls, though. I mean, a lot of people are going to be shouting that that's the difference that Zero Pink can make. But Batman Booga still forced Peterbot to expand. Oh, a my lot. gosh. And we'll pay the price. Can, hand can is shotgun. No bullets in the hand cannon, by the way. That was his last bullet right there. You might recognize the player in that box as well. You know, I was thinking for a second, I might have called it too soon that he was going to exit this lobby with zero eliminations, but no. He turned it into a quick two piece. You have to appreciate it. And I think they needed three. Did they need three to break the record? Oh. It would be tragic if so. But. Hey, still an impressive performance throughout the course of today, uh, week number one. Tie, and yeah, with three, three just shy. Hey, just go again next week? Go again next week. Hey, you gotta give yourself something to look forward to at this point. Clicks and Epic just holding up some of these teams. Towards the bottom side of this hill here, just outside of Reckless Railways. And again, Clicks, Epic, definitely looking relatively well off. But as for skills and Trashy, one of the teams that was held up for so long by Peterbot and Pollo, Skittles will at least be able to find another elimination. And the fact that he's managed to outlast Peterbot and Pollo is probably his ultimate trump card at this point. But I mean, with so, no heals, he's full shambles. So, something to consider, right? Skittles and Trashy, veteran players, right? Tier 1 professional players. It, it does show you when Peter Bot and Pollo go up, go up against pretty good players. Like, it, it's not it's not all fun and games. It's not all easy, right? You're not going to walk through every team in the lobby that fast. Some teams are going to just be in the zone and put up a great defense, a great fight. So if that's any indicator of, you know, what finals can play out as, I mean, finals is going to, that's what every duo is going to consist of, right? Like, really, really top tiers. Um, so it'll be that much more difficult. But also, Peterbot, Pollo, Skittles, Trashy, neither side probably commits as heavily in that initial engagement that caught both those teams out for so long over by the Rift Island. It's essentially sabotage each other's games. Oh my god. Not a sabotaging height, though. It's the second time. Just rip someone out the sky like that. It's never surprising when he does it, but it is kind of gross here. Just jumping straight into Pandy and Ink's box. 
wasting no time whatsoever to secure the next two eliminations. Now Pars and Baka could potentially get focused out, but instead Kanata gonna opt to go just one layer above. Doesn't want to get stuck inside of any low ground action here. He's already gotten the refresh he was after. Bolts and Bryce, though, they're gonna be the current team looking to control height. Yeah, this game's gonna be over before you know it. Puts an epic whale on the western side of the low ground here. One team, like we mentioned, kind of in position to hold this high ground with Pars and Baka. Get pushed on the low. Now the shots come in from Kanata and Cooper. Pressure everywhere. They give it up. Pars is on the move now. Low ground here. Oh, Kanata and Cooper actually stepped in trying to take the fight after the shield crack. It didn't look like they really desperately needed the material, but it must come down to serious points at this stage in the round. Big of a last game can you make here? Pars and Baka have a chance to retaliation here. Wow. Well, clicks on the edge. <laughs> Looks like that player just gave up. I don't know what just happened there, but that's five Elims now. Sometimes you, you just connect with too clean of a shot. Doesn't give any sort of leeway for a reaction time there. Stupid just caught out. But Kanata again, doing a pretty nice job here. Making his way from the front side of the zone. Just looking at a trail along the sides of it. Gonna look back here. Magia gonna also get stuck next to Golden Cow and they're not gonna be able to escape this box. That legendary Warforge assault rifle, just so much spray potential. Such a high fire rate as well and decent damage to just rip through those builds. Definitely shows. Meanwhile, Buck and Pars do have the high ground. Little builds to work with. Kanata Cooper look up to try to see if they can reclaim it. And they're turning their focus on a win now. Condition is here. The woods are weak, but Baka, devastating player. Pars is as well, and Cooper goes down. We really have not seen Cooper shine today like we expect him to in these end games. But everyone does get outclassed at times. Meanwhile, clicks an epic whale here, setting themselves up for what could be a massive game if they could just situate. Epic's got to get his HP up, got to get his shield up, and he might be able to win this game from this awkward angle. For sure. I I'm willing to give Cooper a little bit of benefit of the doubt. Saw that he actually set up a brand new PC leading oh. into today, so can definitely impact overall performance, getting used to the swing of things. Cirque, on the other hand, just immediately ripped through by Flix. Kanata still trying to hold it down, six eliminations. Tarping through this secondary height. Not sure if he spotted out, but it's Clicks and Epic below him. Instead, Kanata trying to challenge the high ground, but it's all for not. He'll find himself eliminated now. His run come to an end for the day, but still a strong performance overall. But now it's down to Clicks and Epic. They want to keep the streak going strong. They want a victory royale to close the day out. They might just find it here, too. Yeah, Zooks can definitely beat. The thorn in the side, but no, Polis finds him. And now they're just looking to high ground. Clicks breaks it out. That's going to be huge white damage there from the fall. Well played in Epic Whale's got the pressure going up now as well. And they're actually working together. You love to see it. That is how you play the low ground, especially when they got the timer on their side. 20 seconds is so much. Feels like an eternity in this end game. Epic looking for an angle. Clicks is so hurt. He's got all the splashes. Use it, don't lose it type scenario here, but instead he's focusing on the offense and they should be able to win this game now. Unless he has heals, we'll oh. find out if he did. And Clicks had the splashes. We know that Epic tries to get to his teammate and he could not in time. What an end game, what a last round. Another huge placement though for Clicks and Epic Whale as Polis and company take the win there. Epic just a little bit sabotaged. Looked like he unfortunately clipped the side of that pre-existing bill, the mantle interrupting. Where he might have been able to cover the ground just in time to at least peek at, at where Polis was at. It seems like Epic definitely knew where Polis was located, but overall, second place finish. And again, huge shout outs to Flix FPS and Polis for finding themselves a victory royale. Hey, it's not always about how you start the day MDF. That's one of my favorite sayings. It's about how you are able to close the day. And for these two, it's definitely an impressive feat finding the victory royale here.
Yeah, and of all the games we watched, that one had like a lot of players. We, we kind of highlighted it early on that there were over 63 or so players um, as we were like around zone six or so. So definitely a more stacked lobby and big names in there too. So what, what a fantastic win there, Taco. Yeah, and absolutely loved a lot of the action that we saw here today. MDF had an awesome time alongside you casting week number one here in major number two and just excited to see what happens pressing forward. But again, that's going to be it from myself and you for today, MDF. We've got Zeke and the analyst to break down everything that took place here today. Thank you so much, Monster D-Face and the best taco. Shout outs to y'all. Incredible cast on the day. My gosh. Epic Whale and Clicks almost getting themselves the victory out, but it did not go that way. Once again, we take things to a heel off. And for Polis to just be able to say, okay, you know what? I've got the tools in my belt. I can just back off. Let's start the heel off. If they don't have anything, we walk away with the win. And as our casters pointed out, Every point matters, right? So that victory out being worth so many points for them is going to make a huge difference. Yeah, pull a shout out. It's not very easy to go ahead and fend off all of the pressure that was coming in from Clicks and Epic Will. I mean, you could see repetitively, Epic Will was trying to find some sort of angle to actually get up there, deal some damage to Polis, but he was just not letting it happen. Eventually went out into the storm and played that heal off. Like you mentioned, three victory royales for that duo, Kelly. And they're actually looking for their first FNCS final. So what a statement coming out from them. It was definitely a statement. And I, I think the heal off meta definitely worked out for them by taking a late high ground. By doing that, you can kind of conserve your heals. They did a great job making sure that they took high ground when it was available for them. And then you're able to kind of have a better advantage when it does come down to a heal off. And that's what you want when you're going up against someone like Epic Whale and Clicks. But what an incredible run for that duo. They've had such a good day easily the best placements that we've seen out of any duo from NAC. So I love to see them, even though they didn't get the victory royale, a second place is pretty dang good, Zeke. Yeah, you don't always need that victory royale. Like, of course, those small different points is helpful. But again, like you're saying, the consistency from the duo, just to look at some of their placements, they had several games within the top five, a second, a first, fourth, then a first and a second. And they've only had two games, one 12th and one 25th. And remember, we had a window here. So we could either play 10 games or we could play with like games until we hit three hours. They've only played seven of their 10 games. When you guys see the standings with that in mind, that should tell you everything you need to know. These guys have been so consistent all day long. And especially in a circumstance like this, where lobby to lobby, who you're facing is constantly changing. That's a testament to their skill alone. Oh, 100%. I mean, their average place to be in 6.71. The statement was definitely there from clicks and epic whale. But honestly, Kelly, that, that last game meant a lot to me as well, because it's like, well, not, not to me, like personally, but <laughs> watching them kind of like develop, you know, like watching them actually play the low ground very, very well. Yes. I mean, they weren't able to close the game out. I won't lie. Like maybe they should have been able to win that 2v1. Maybe there's some things that they can improve on there. But getting to that position means so much to them, I feel like, because, you know, we talked about it last season. They seem so committed to the higher ground that sometimes, now just sometimes, it seemed like it was a detriment. If if they can actually add a little bit more to their back pocket, be able to actually play that low ground, gosh, we could really see them beat out that fourth place that they got last major. Yeah, it's, it's so funny to see a team that did incredibly well in major one improve so much in yeah. such a short amount of time you can really see them evolving as a duo so you love to see it and with that evolution we see them currently in first place congratulations to the big clicks and of course phases <laughs> epic whale taking the first open qualifiers here for major two and we also have some other big names up here acorn and cold are reigning champs currently sitting in third place skittles and trashy in fifth but I do want to talk about Peterbot and Poyo, 84 eliminations, and we got to see them in that Ooh. last game. All they needed to tie the most amount of eliminations in all of the regions was three, and they only got two. It looks like OCE is going to be walking away with the most amount of <laughs> eliminations for a duo, and that's going to be Resign's duo. But I mean, 
Peter Bott and Poyo, what a polarizing performance we saw from the early part of this open qualifier to the end game. Yeah, I, they definitely stole the show, I would say, for sure. I mean, definitely slowed down towards the end of things, but their play style, it's so hard to continuously do. I mean, we are in an FNCS lobby, right? Round four, top 250 duos on the region. Eventually, you're going to run out of gas, right? Eventually, you're going to run into somebody who can kind of just take it to you, but still the highlight reel that we were able to watch throughout the day incredible stuff and i mean coming into today everybody was like yeah they're winning fncs and honestly after some of the performances that we saw in some of those games it looks like they just might do that zeke yeah absolutely just again just the talent we've gotten to see today and really quickly i just wanted to double back to the team in second place it was flicks it was yeah. polis and the only thing i wanted to point out right they ended in second which is huge but off of that single game they climbed nine whole places Oof. to find themselves in that second place, right? That's what these Victor Royales can do. And just think, again, we're playing for series points. So now after today, coming in or ending the day in second place, that is going to net them so many series points. So it's not over until it's over. <laughs> Congratulations to them. Man, this is just week number one. We're already seeing people and these duels kind of change and evolve game to game. I'm almost excited for, or I am excited rather for week number two. How much more could we see these duels evolve in just this next week? Mm, yeah, that, that'll be the question, right? How good do they really need to get to prepare themselves for semifinals, get into finals, right? That's where everything kind of starts to kick up. I mean, listen, we're talking about how clicks and Epic Welcome kind of improve. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of these other teams try to do the exact same thing, right? Try to add a little bit more to their back pocket. They can kind of rely on getting into some of these end games. Honestly, though, I would say that the, the surprise for me on the day, though, Kelly, was I didn't really feel like we saw a lot of teams when they got that aspect of agility really be able to control high ground or be able to take it as easily as i may have seen right so it seemed like sometimes there's a big question mark as to who actually had it or, or why they weren't on height yeah the only times i really saw aspect of agility being used was in those mid-game fights where they were just kind of gunning in for those eliminations and of course i'm talking about peter bot and poyo so yeah. maybe it was a little bit of a different story for other duos out there but Zeke, for me, going into week two, the only thing that's consistent with Fortnite is that it's constantly changing. And I know that's something that we talk about a lot here in the FNCS is these players being adaptable. And so that is what I want to see for week two. If we do have any changes, regardless of if it's the meta, if it's something that actually is gets patched in Fortnite, how are these players going to be able to be adapting to it? Well, at very minimum, we've seen they can adapt to one thing, and that's Peter Ba and Poyo. They can say, okay, pump the brakes, friends. You ain't running away with 20 elimination games no more. Uh, that is about it for us here in week number one, though. Don't forget, next week we'll be back. EU as well before us, and then we'll be back to watch more games of Fortnite. How will the players adapt over the next week? Well, you have to tune in next weekend to find out. As always, we love you. Keep yourself safe, and we'll see you on that battle bus. Beep, beep. Beep.